Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Here we go. How you doing? It's going to be a great day on Undisputed. We're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys and LeBron James and Tom Brady is history in New England. Whoa. How about that? Whoa, you don't see it get any better? You don't seem very happy about this. Yeah. I'm very happy. I watched the Clippers last night. So let's see. I saw the Clippers last night. You saw the Clippers, Skip? You like that, huh? Seriously, you brought it up? You allowed, you opened the door? I've done that. Did you see what he did to Devin Booker? He put the handcuffs on him. He shot five for 19, shot one for eight from three. I'm trying to figure out how can the best player on the planet be the only player on the winning side with a negative. He was minus. How is that? Whatever. Hey, Jim, how you doing, Skip? Did you see Doc's quotes about what again. he did to Devin Booker? <laughs> you are missing the boat again. Thank you for bringing that up because that's the only Clipper reference we're going to get in this whole show. I mean, geez, and you know who we do have to talk Clippers. about? <laughs> yeah, uh, the Rockets as well. We have an absolutely packed show. Are the Rockets the new team to beat in the West after their fifth straight win? And could Tom Brady end up signing with one of the Patriots' biggest Rivals. Mm. That actually happened. But first, <laughs> how about we talk about that guy, Dak Prescott, and the Cowboys. Dak still doesn't have a new deal, but new head coach Mike McCarthy fully believes that Dak is the quarterback to bring a championship back to Dallas. Yesterday at the NFL Combine, McCarthy had high praise for what Prescott's done in his first four years. Take a listen. I've been impressed with him since the first time I saw him play live, you know, in, up, up, up in Green Bay. Uh, when they when they came to the Lambo there, he's gone off to a great start. He's he's built a really good foundation. Um, I'm told he's a tremendous leader. So, in in my philosophy, as we as we get with, you know, the the personnel department, and as we go through that, I mean, the defense defenses get you to the championship. The the quarterbacks win championships, and I, and I definitely feel Dak is is that quarterback. So Shannon, uh, what do you read into this? Skip, I'm reading in it. He's saying exactly what he should say. He didn't say what Ron Rivera said about Haskins, Skip. Oh, we like him, but we'll, it'll, you know, explore all our options. All you need to know about <laughs> the Washington Redskins. Thank you. Thank you. Skip, I believe, look, if the Cowboys are so convinced, I've heard Stephen Jones says, Dak's our guy. Mm-hmm. I've heard Jerry Jones say, Dak's our guy. And mm-hmm. now you have Mike McCarthy, who's the new head coach, Skip, saying, He loved the foundation that he's already built. He's been very, very successful from the very first time I watched him up at Lambeau. We love him. What's the deal? What's the problem? Why haven't we got this deal done? And that's what Dak says, Skip. Dak said, I hear all that praise. Mm -hmm. I still don't see no contract in front of me. Mm -hmm. That's doable. Skip, you remember what Jerry said last year? Jerry said, it would be embarrassing. It would be shocking if you knew the size of check I would write if you guaranteed me a Super Bowl. It would be obscene. There is nothing... I would do financially not to get a Super Bowl. Now, here's the thing, Skip. When Dak Prescott came into the NFL, the salary cap was $155 million. The projection this year is between 197 and 201. So a conservative estimate, since he's been in the league, the cap has gone up 30%, Janie. 30%. Mm-hmm. Now, if Dak is what you believe he's going to be, Skip, yep. how much is too much for a Super Bowl? Now, Jerry, say it now. We haggling, I, I believe we're haggling over a few more million dollars guaranteed per year. So I, I think that's that's where the hold up is, Skip. Not that, you know, sure Dak wants $40 million to be the first $40 million guy. Skip, we can make anything look good on paper. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you know how we got to do these contracts. We got to weed yeah. through all that stuff and say, yep. okay, once we get past the fluff, how did the cake taste? Yeah, it got I, nice icing. Jenny got a, you know, got a, uh, got these figures on top. But does the cake taste good? Dak wants to know. <laughs> How much of this real money am I actually getting? So for me, it makes no sense. If if you believe Dak is the guy that can win you Super Bowl, and Skip Bayless tells me Super Bowls, sure, is $38, $40 million too much for the sake of our, let's say, I'm going to be conservative, Skip Bayless, because you say he's Brady-esque. Let's just say over the next 15 years, the Brady-esque quarterback gets you three Super Bowls. So I'm saying he's half a Brady. Mm. It's $40 million a year too much, Skip. 
Is it my turn? <laughs> or are these hypotheticals? Are these just sort of... I'm just saying, okay. because you're saying you're basing it on projections. Yep. Steven and Jerry says he's the guy. Mike McCarthy says he likes what he's seen thus far. So it makes sense to me that, like, okay, if you believe that, mm -hmm. you go ahead and pay him the okay. money and you don't even think twice because Jerry said he write a big check. <sighs> my turn. Yeah, Thank you turn. very Please. much. Whew. Here we go. Here's what just happened. I believe that Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones handpicked Mike McCarthy as a perfect fit for them as a new partner in crime. I think they, they found in their, you know, long into the night to the early morning session with him at their mansion in Highland Park in <laughs> Dallas, Texas, that he's one of them. He's a bird of their feather. He's a beer and nachos all night kind of guy. <laughs> And that's what they are. They like to sit around and kick it around and order more beer and more nachos. You saw him sitting at that podium. He eat more than beer and drink it, drinking more than beer and eat uh -oh. nachos. Okay. Well, <laughs> Stevens let himself go a little bit too. And Steven played at Arkansas. Too much fun. <laughs> okay. Beer so this is for them a co-conspirator. Th this is a, a, a cagey smart guy from humble beginnings, Mike mm -hmm. McCarthy, yeah. who who knows what it feels like and what it took to win a Super Bowl. Because yeah. he does know that. Yes. And so do they, because yeah. they have experienced the top of the mountain, too. Three of them. And they all came from little beginnings to big achievements. So they relate there because they know the ropes and they know how to play the angles. So I believe that Jerry suggested or maybe even ordered Mike McCarthy as they went to the combine for him to do his first big media session with all the reporters post intro press mm -hmm. conference, you be the good cop this time because we've got to hang in as the bad cops here, but you take a shot that we can't take because you appeal to that young man's football ego. And he has a huge football, or uh, let's take the ego out of pride. Yeah. Appeal to his football pride, okay. right? Better. Okay, you, Mike, try to melt some of the ice that has built up between us and Dak and his agent, because it's a glacier right now mm -hmm. of ice. And you try to send this message. And here it is. Remember, Mike McCarthy is basically saying between the lines, hey, Dak, I coached Brett Favre for two years. Mm -hmm. I coached Aaron Rodgers for 11 years and we won a Super Bowl together. And Dak, I bless you, young man. I see greatness in you. I see the potential for you and I to win Super Bowls, plural, together. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a pretty big mouthful from that guy. Yes. He's Mike Bleepin' McCarthy in a lot of people's eyes mm -hmm. and maybe in Dak's eyes. And he's saying... And, and I'm not saying none of the, it, it, this is still legit talk from him. I think he did take one look at him in 2016, and that was when I, that was my breakout game here right. on this show. Because right. they went up to Lambeau and they were just babies. Yeah. You know, he and Zeke go up to Lambeau against Aaron Rodgers and just shellacked them, just laid it all over, just ran them off their own field. Oh, you right? like that, huh? Well, it was something. It was a tour de force. It was the, the welcome to the NFL, or as Tiger said, hello world. That was a hello world game for huh. Dak and Zeke. Yeah. Both we, of them. We saw a lot of that for the rest of the year, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Well, you did. They went 13 <laughs> no, and no, 3. They, you kept pulling they it up. They went 13 and 3. You kept pulling yeah. it up. Every okay. time I would say Dak yeah. played bad, you look, look at what he did to Aaron Rodgers. Heck, they oh, beat yeah. Aaron Rodgers in a playoff game until he stole it back <laughs> thanks to his kicker, Mason Crossbar. Well, Don't he did. They stole it. Moments. They stole They had him beaten. You never had the lead in that game, though. It was 31 all. from tw We were down 21 to 3, and my quarterback just sucked it up and, and lifted them back into the game at 31 all. Empty calories. Okay, empty. 31 to 31 is not empty to <laughs> no, me. No, I'm sorry. That's pretty false. Thank you. So the point is, he, he, he believes in Dak, but he also, he's a smart guy. Now he's Mr. Analytics. Spent a whole year studying analytics. Right. He knows what happened last year. They went eight and eight. Right. And a lot of people, including me, thought they could win the, the whole NFC and get to the Super Bowl. And yet he saw again and again Dak missed that play, and he missed that play, and he missed Tavon wide open at Philly that could have tied the game. And he didn't make enough of the play to get over the hump into the playoffs. But you know what I'm hearing from you right now, Skip Bayless? I'm hearing from you 
that something I never heard during the season because when he missed those throws and he didn't win those games, it was Jason Garrett's fault. Now he wants his money. It wasn't Garrett's fault. It was Dak's fault. I said after the Philly game, that's on Dak. Yeah. Th and then they came back and wiped out Washington and it looked like, well, there was that team. That's what should have been, right? Yeah. Okay, well, we saw what should have been and they put up a lot of, he, he had his career uh, passing yards and career yeah, touchdowns. touchdowns. So, yeah. and, and they put up some historic offensive numbers, but it all added up to eight and eight, yeah. which is Jason Garrett's born and raised middle name. His mother nicknamed him eight and eight right out of the womb. <laughs> okay. This is old eight and eight Jason. Well, let me ask you yeah. this. You looking at a, you looking at a chart. We like charts. We like figures. Where is the arrow? Where is the projection? Is the projection for Dak going okay, here? I, I haven't finished what okay. I'm trying to explain okay. to you here. So Mike McCarthy is sending the message to Dak that, hey, I, I can get you over the hump here. Together, I, I can take you to the next level. And that's a strong message to appeal to a young man's leadership pride because he is the, and, and Mike said, from what I hear, I'm told he's a tremendous leader. He is the leader of the mm -hmm. franchise. He is obviously the face of the franchise. So now you're, you're trying to drive a little bit of a psychological wedge between him and his agent because all of a sudden, Mike is trying to take his mind back to the locker room and the meeting room and the huddle and the field instead of on his bank account. That's what he's trying to do here. Because there's value in having Mike McCarthy as your new head coach. Mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy is a play caller. He called plays for years. He gave it up for one year in Green Bay. Now he's going to let Kellen Moore try. I'm going to be uh, wait and see on that one. We'll see how long that okay. lasts. But the point is that Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Dak Prescott, you just got blessed by Mike McCarthy. Wouldn't that speed your urgency to get a deal done? Might that melt some of the ice in your heart right now? No, because Dak Prescott has on noise-canceling headphones. He can't hear anything that noise <laughs> y'all talking about because you're talking noise because Aaron Rodgers got his money. If you say, okay, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre got their money. Skip, all I'm saying is, is that you believe that Dak, Dak is going here. You believe he's ascending. Not descending. Mm -hmm. And so if the cap is moving up 30% since he first got into the league, what's the deal? What's the problem okay. if he's going to deliver you okay. a Super Bowl? Okay. You keep bringing up that old Jerry quote. It's a fairy tale quote. Jerry's just saying, hypothetically, if you told me I could write a check for, I don't know how much Jerry's worth, but for $3 billion. Probably six billion. Okay. Let's say $5 billion then. Yeah. If you told me I could write a check for $5 billion and okay. that would guarantee me next year's Super Bowl no. championship, no. he would write that check. But you can't do that because there's this thing called a cap. No. And by the way, in all the CBS rancor and outrage and, and all the chaos that right. we hear that could ensue now that some of the veteran players, the stars, have said, wait a second. Right. Have you heard one guy say, we got to do away with the cap? Nobody says that. Right. They're still accepting the cap point blank, right. like, like no problem. No, but Skip, Dak is saying, you don't have to write a $3 billion check. You just got to write a check for about $150 okay, million. you have no idea about that. And I don't have, because nobody has reported a single figure. Here's what you don't know. This right. is what I dread. This is what I fear. Right. That agent may be asking for money that would even change your opinion about it. He might be asking for $45 million a year. And I'm not going to condemn or blame right. him for that. But what if he, he is asking, I told you, I, I, I have one source very close to this who said he's overstepping his bounds. He, he's a little out of bounds right now with what he's asking because he fears how big a, a, a new cap even two years from now might correct, be. Correct. Or, you know, correct. revenue it right. goes on and on. Right. We don't know how the CBA is going to shake out. Right. And he doesn't want to get caught flat-footed in one year correct. with, wait a second, you only took that for Dak That Prescott? number is obsolete. Correct. Okay. Yes. It, it, they get ab obsolete very, <laughs> very quickly. quickly. But right now, it may be not an obsolete number. It may be an obscene number. It might be so far out of bounds that, that even Shannon Sharp would sit back and say, well, you, you can't do that. Well, here's the thing, Skip. I believe in any negotiation, you always, always start high. I'm not starting at a low number. It's like, okay, we'll take it. No, I'm going to start incredibly I'm going to start incredibly high okay, because but, I believe the Cowboys started incredibly low. Okay, but the problem with our, our argument about this on a daily basis is how high is too high? I don't know what the number... If you could tell me right now he's asking for $50 million, I would say... That's absurdly too high. Okay, let me ask you, but here's the thing. Are they at a number which we don't know? 
are they at a number more guaranteed money than Wentz and Golf? Because if that, that's the starting skip. That's the starting I, I, point. I don't know because not one figure has been reported that I've seen. But have you seen a figure? I have not seen no. a figure. But I'm taking it like this. This is where I'm going to look at it, Skip. Those guys got deals done with a year left on their contract, and they got the high, most guaranteed money ever. Mm -hmm. What do you think a guy that's free, that's at the end of his contract, he's going to want? Okay. Quick question. Yes. How many national TV commercials does Carson Wentz have? Skip. How many? I haven't seen any. I might have missed one. Skip. Did, did I miss one? I, let me, I, this, this would be the equivalent of this. Because Peyton Manning came up with a privileged background, his dad played, he had money. The Indianapolis Colts should have never gave him fair market value because he already had money. No. That got nothing to do with this, Skip. Ha this has everything to no. do with it. No! Would Dak Prescott have the revenue stream he enjoys as the quarterback of America's team if he didn't play for the Dallas Cowboys. Skip. Would yeah. he? Would he have that? No. Maybe, maybe. No. But, but Skip, he gave you a discount when you selected him in the fourth round and you kept him on a rookie contract throughout the entirety. You could have came, you could have went to Dak after his third year and redid this deal, Skip. Mm. You could have done that. Okay, quick question. Did yes. Jared Goff have any national TV commercials? I might have missed one. Jenny's done a big piece. Hell, I don't know if you have any local no ads. One. We live in L.A. We I don't, I don't know. No. I, I don't think I so. don't know, but I'm he's a Los Angeles Rams quarterback and he has no national what, endorsement. What would the cap time out? Okay. He Dak Press look Banana Republic. Is it local or no, national? It's national? Okay, I'll yeah. give you one then. Yeah. Okay. Dak has, to my knowledge, at least 12 that I know of, that I have detailed. And it's hard to know because those deals aren't always disclosed. Right. But I'm gonna guesstimate that the range of his revenue stream off the field income, thanks to being in that jersey for that team, is about forty to fifty million dollars in endorsement revenue. You talking about a year? Yeah. Oh no. I don't know. No. That's I've read this. Now I read it. I've read that Peyton Manning is the highest endorser. Now Peyton does. Hey, remember Adam Schefter reported that he gets fifty million off the field, but he included it under the umbrella of with a policy, an insurance right, policy right. to insure him. And so I don't know how it breaks down right. exactly. Skip, that's but, a lot. but I've seen estimates of up to $40 million in in national TV endorsement But think revenue. about it, Skip. Dak is not even the top 50. So if with that kind of money, when they when Forbes listed top entertainers, athletes, mm -hmm. he Dak doesn't hey, even touch the board. Hey, but wait a second. If he has a dozen of these commercials, yes. let's let's do, okay, let's do $36 million in income. That would be $3 million Per deal. Yeah. Well, that, that doesn't I don't believe seem... no, no. Skip, skip. You talk, hold on. You talk about superstar, stu superstar type money getting that kind of money for endorsements. That ain't getting that kind of money. I don't know. I know. Well, do you? Yes. You're not that, a superstar. No, no, Skip, but I, but I, but I, I know superstars and I know some of the deals that they get. Skip, no. Now, it was reported that Michael did deals is that you had to do 10 years. So you had to lock it. So uh, he had deals. So he locked you in. So yeah, I'll cut, I might cut your deal, Skip. Instead of charging you three million, I might do two if you you know stay this length of time. But Skip, that that kind of money, he would have to be a top fifty. I haven't seen Dak when Forbes lists their top earning athletes. When you factor in like LeBron James is like ninety million dollars and Messi and and Cristiano Ronaldo, okay. Dak ain't on that list. In and of himself, do you find him to be a charismatic figure outside yes. the uniform? I don't. Yes. I, I find him to be a, just a generally nice, quiet guy. Pretty yeah. quiet guy. I, I, right? I like him. I is like there any him. electricity to him? Is there any spark to him? Is, is there any edge to skip, him? Is he pro no, is no, 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 no. <laughs> it's he? that jersey and that star yeah. in his helmet that makes him. A marketable quarterback. Skip, it's hard to be really. I mean, Peyton Manning is, is 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 an anomaly because the guys wear shoulder pads, they wear helmets, and so it's really hard to see. It's not like basketball, Skip. It's not like you know soccer guys. You see their face all the time, unless I mean guys wear helmets and shoulder pads, and like you say, you see a guy outside of, outside of his pads, you're like. Damn, he's small. He, 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 I didn't know he was that small. Yep. But at, at, with basketball and other guys that you see their face all the time, so it's really hard for you to sell a football player mm -hmm. because for, basketball is easy to skip because, like, you wear shoes with your suits. You wear them to the mall. What the hell am I going to do with a pair of cleats besides play football in them? Yeah. So it's hard to endorse. But I, I'm looking at Dak, Skip, and I'm saying they believe he's this. You believe that Dak can win a Super Bowl. Love him. But, Love him.
at what price? I don't know. Are they asking for an obscene amount of money that would completely wreck the ability to keep Amari Cooper? It I, might. I, I don't. I don't. I don't believe. I, I, like Remember, I said, Amari's about to get top receiver money. Yes. So yes. So what if I told you that what he's asking for right now would preclude keeping Amari Cooper? Let me ask what you would question. you say? I, I'm gonna say. Are you asking Amari to give us give you a discount? Are you asking Byron Jones to give you a discount? Or are you going to ask for some of those linemen's money back? Or are you going to get some of Demarcus Lawrence's money back? Because you didn't ask them. Water under the bridge. But so so skill. Okay. Why you? That, they're all done. They're skill. done. So that this this is Dak's argument. This is his his agent's argument. You never ask them to think about the core and the cap like you're asking me. Why me? Okay, but. Demarcus Lawrence, we just watched, and we just had him on at the Super Bowl. He got $100 million total. Yes. He looked like no $100 million man to me last year. Jerry looked like he way overpaid for Demarcus. Okay. I told you, this is my personal opinion. Zeke didn't come anywhere close to living up to his new, what was it, contract? It was uh, 90 million. 90 million. Yeah. 50 guaranteed. He, he was not that guy right. this year. And I thought Jerry started to look dangerously like he way overpaid for Ezekiel Elliott. So he overpaid for Zeke. He possibly, you believe he overpaid for Demarcus Lawrence. So Dak is saying, okay, when I made 500000 and I went 13-3 and three and I was rookie of the year, was I overpaid or underpaid? Because you didn't compensate me if I was underpaid. And what about last year? What about the year before I won another division? Skip, I got two divisions under my belt and I made 800000 Was I under or overpaid because you gave me no compensation? Now! Remember, when you're talking about the defensive end yeah. and the running back and any of the offensive linemen relative to the quarterback money, it's way down. It's way low. And like, it's not cap wrecking and, money. And, and guess what you told me? And you said next to the, the defensive lineman and the running back and the offensive lineman, the quarterback is of grave importance. So of grave importance, he should take the majority of the cap. Well, do you have a plan B? Do you have an option out there? <laughs> well, now, and we're about to talk about this in a few minutes, there are rampant reports. Tom Brady is gone from New England. I can't believe you. I'm going to throw it out again. No, don't throw it out. Hey, Jerry Jones is win now. Jerry Jones' other quote that we bring up often is <laughs> about his age. He right. says, my window is closing yeah. here. And I don't know why he, he talks about his mortality yeah, yeah, so he's much, coming but he in, does. Yes. Maybe he thinks I don't take care of myself very well. Maybe I'm not going to last that much longer. Oh, he didn't take care of himself a couple of – he might be taking better care, better care of himself now with maybe the year, the accumulation. Oh, yes. Maybe, <laughs> maybe those Super Bowl years he paid some big prices yes. with the end of his life, right? right? The stress of the yeah. job yeah. can't be easy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and, know if you know what? That is a that fact. Yeah. That's high. That's almost – that's close to being president of the United States stress. is to run the Dallas with Cowboys, him, right? with, with him, Skip, because – he put so much pressure on himself. Mm -hmm. You think Mike Brown staying up late at night trying to worry about winning the Super Bowl? You think some of these other owners, not like him. Okay. And so, he's thinking about building, even growing the brand even further. So if the glacier between Jerry Steven and Dak Agent continues to grow, despite what Mike McCarthy just tried to do as the good cop, I, I'm all for Tom Brady. If Tom Brady would say, yeah, Jerry, I'll take 30 a year for two years to come and help win, win two Super Bowls for you. Let's do it. Okay, Skip, look here. This Let's is what go. I, Skip, I do you like this here. Give him five, give him five years, $200 million, It looks good on paper. And give him $120 million guaranteed. Who? That? That! You throw those numbers out. Like, That's no all you got to do. No big deal. Because think about it. In three years, the cap's going to be 260 275 That's going to be looking like nothing. Timing. Okay. He's one and two in the playoffs. It happens. I, I can't defend that. I can't defend that. Well, with Tony Romo. Mm. Mm. Well, he's better than Tony Romo. Okay. Well, yeah. And Jerry made him the highest paid yeah. without blinking an eye. Yeah. Mm. You know, you brought up Carson Wentz, and I did look it up. He has worked with Bobcat and a hunting company. Oh, So wow. a bit different than... Uh, okay. Oh, Bobcat. Oh, Bobcat. Just so you yeah. know. Yeah. Not exactly Campbell's chunky suit. <laughs> the is target it? audience, right? very Midwest. Yeah, yeah. I you can know. see him working with Bobcat. <laughs> it makes I, sense. It makes I can sense. see him working with machinery. You know, my family had a couple of those growing up. You know. No mercy. Tuesday night, LeBron James had a season-high 40 points and a win against the Pelicans. But we'll have to wait a few more days to see him back in action. LeBron will miss tonight's game versus the Warriors with a sore groin. And remember last season, Lakers fell out of playoff contention after LeBron suffered a torn groin in December. So, Shannon, is this a big deal? 
or no big deal? Not a big deal at all. Not a big deal. A little service. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Skip, baby, we get service. You know, every once, <clears throat> every 3,000 miles, you get an oil change. And, you know, every, you know, 2,500 <laughs> miles, maybe 5,000 miles, you go get your car, get service. So every 50 game, every 25 games or so, what we do? We take a break. That's a little, little maintenance. Just keep, keep it in the road. Skip, because look, think about what we got here. Now, they just played, the, they played like three games in the last five days. They play tonight. They play again Saturday. They play Sunday. They play Tuesday. So, LeBron, so we're we going to try to steal it from moving forward. We're going to try to steal a game wherever we can. And so that's what we're doing. We're trying to steal a little game right here because we're going to get tough. I mean, we got, Memphis, we got Golden State, Memphis, but New Orleans. And then you got Philly. Then you got the Bucks, And then you got the Clippers. Whoops. Yeah, ain't no whoops. Whoops. Ain't no whoops. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no whoops. Yeah, we might, might open up a can on somebody. Somebody go catch this. Because really? you know Braun already. You, you remember that? Kawhi you might have opened a can of spinach on you, that. You, 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 you remember, you remember uh, last year? Yeah. He said he going to activate playoff mode early. He just mistimed it. He just oh, mistimed, it. He just mistimed it. He opened it and it's now activate. Activate playoff mode. Did, did they make the playoffs last year? I, didn't I just tell you he activated the mold? Oh, no. He was hurt. He was nicked. Mm. So, no, Skip, it's not a big deal. He's only missed two games all season. He leads the league. He leads the uh, Lakers in minutes. He's 14th in the NBA. I mean, let this thing in, Skip. This is the lo- he's playing less than 35 minutes a game, which is the lowest in his career, and considering mm. that he's giving you 25 and a half, 10 and a half, and almost eight rebounds, I think he deserves a night off. You know, sometimes, you know, Skip, when you're a veteran player, I remember my last couple of years in Denver, you know, Mike would come to me and say, hey, 84, take the afternoon off. I'm like, huh? I'm like, what did I do to the Hey, take it off. Frank Vogel went to went the old GOAT. He said, he said, hey, GOAT, let me talk to you for a second. He go in there, what's up, coach? I think he calls him GOAT. Yeah, yeah, they call him GOAT. Yeah, old Frank Vogel, old Frankie V. Hey, Frank GOAT. They went to him and say, uh, GOAT. Coach, uh, Coach V want to talk to you. Mm. So he goes in there and says, nah, what's up, Coach? Mm. He say, uh, go, take, the, take tomorrow night off. He's like, all right. He's like, are you sure? Because I can go get you one of these virtuosos. He's like, we don't even need to get Golden State. Mm. We don't need that. Take it off. Mm. Be ready to go on a Friday. You told that story completely upside down <laughs> from how it really happened. Oh, boy. I'll tell you how that story actually <laughs> transpired. <laughs> LeBron was leaving practice, and he turned around and he said, hey, Vogel, <laughs> come here. And Vogel just... just no, he did. No, he did. Like this, no, he like, did. Yes, what do you want, sir? And th- that's when LeBron said, I'm taking off the Golden State game. Yes, sir. LeBron's not like much, that. Coach. LeBron's not like that. Right? No, LeBron is very respectful, yeah. very thoughtful. He's very, not, he's very respectful of his coaches. Not behind closed doors. Yes, that's he is. That's not what I've heard. So... Here is the point. Your your point is exactly valid unless you can tell me the groin is becoming an issue. It became a big issue on right. Christmas Day of yeah. two two Christmases ago. Yeah. Okay? Yes. And it cost him a whole chunk of time, and you can argue it cost him the whole season yeah. because maybe he never quite got he back. He never on was the track. same. Okay? So is it starting to flare again? Or is it just the most convenient excuse that LeBron has in his bag, as mm-hmm. they say? He's got a bag of excuses that he can reach into, and the easiest excuse to pull is groin because everybody knows it pulled two Christmases ago, Correct. right? So it's legit to use it as an excuse because it has recent credibility, right? And he missed one other game this year in which he also pulled out the my groin is sore right. excuse. And it plays okay because the, the public and especially the billions of blind witnesses out there just say, yeah, it's the groin. Yeah. If you tell me it's really starting to go, then you've got a big problem, no, right? No problem. Okay, well, you don't know because we, we always get... talk about it's hard to know what's going on in a man's body. You right. just don't sure. know, but even the training staff probably does. Is it starting to go? Because sometimes they start to tweak and then they just... I mean, it's getting, here's the thing. Right. For me... I don't drive a whole lot, Jen. I go to work, go to work out. I only put about, in a year, I only put about 4,000 miles on my car. Yeah, really? But I still go get it serviced. Yeah. Why? Because I'm going to make sure I'm staying on top of things, Skip. Okay, so LeBron James also missed one other game this year, and he reached for the second most convenient excuse in his bag, I got the flu. Well, got the everybody flu. gets the flu. No, they don't. No, they don't. And, well. and he had the quote-unquote flu, and then... 
One night later at Staples, he showed up not to play basketball, to be on stage with Bad Bunny. What? Bad oh, Bunny. Hold on. Hold on. I'm He's glad got you got the flu. You know what, Jenny? He was contagious. Bad Bunny, he might have, I don't know, they That's might have gotten You that. know what, Jenny? What? I'm glad he brought this up because I wasn't going to bring it up. Now, if you remember correctly, Dame Lillard was voted to the All Star game. Okay. Dame Lillard pulled out of the game because he had a, a hurt growing. Mm -hmm. But who was performing All Star game at halftime? The one Dame Lillard. So, in other words, you might be hurt enough where you cannot perform your fair trait, but you okay, you healthy enough to get on stage. That's all I'm saying, Skip Baylor. Did he stand flat footed on stage. Hey, did he move? Yeah. He didn't move. Oh, hold up. So, he. I ain't never seen a rapper get on stage and stand in one spot. He, he was standing pretty <laughs> No, he was moving. Totally now, my still. man Wayne, he was doing yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's all I'm, that's all I'm yeah. saying. You can, be, you can be hurt enough I not to you. perform your job, but you can be okay to do someone else's. Shannon, your point is correct. Your point is your point. He needs to take a game off. He needs to take several games off before the real games start. He deserves to take several games off because you inadvertently just let this spill out of your mouth. He leads the Lakers in minutes, yes, correct? Yes, yes. It's too many at 35 and age 17. You need to load, manage, especially when you're that guy playing at the level you've been playing okay, at. Okay, well, we injury he managing. Is, he has earned load management. Yeah. He is not injured. I don't injury believe that. Management. I don't, you, know, you don't believe it either. <laughs> he you're injury laughing. Managing. He injury managing. Just own it. <laughs> Just say, I need to take a night off. Russell Westbrook takes a number of nights off, and he just owns it. I'm, I just, he plays, Skip, and you know, you we're, we're about to talk about yeah, it. We are. He plays hellacious hard every night. He needs to load, manage. But Skip, nobody has the scrutiny or the criticism that LeBron has, and he needs to take, because Skip, look, I mean, they got Golden State and Memphis, and then starting Sunday, Skip, they go New Orleans. I, I got, don't you even need to read it? I'm, I mean, I'm with you. They got the Clippers yes, in yes, Houston, yes, Denver, Utah. Yes, yes, yes. A Take a night off. No, own it. You just want him to own it. Just Not own it. We might take and a. The reason he can't own it is because he's taking little shots at his new arch rival who lives in the no, basement. He, he ain't talking to. He yes, he is. Arch rival lives in the basement, and the arch rival. D declared open warfare on opening night in a commercial for New Balance. Oh He's got a dangling keychain with a crown on it, and it says Kawhi Town on the exit. Ooh. He's saying, I now own this town, but I load manage. So the, the what shot do you take at my man Kawhi Leonard None. every day, every day on this show? Oh, does he play? Is he yeah. going to play yeah, two yeah. games this month or yeah. four games yeah, this that's month? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Right? Okay, so LeBron can't look like he's load managing because then he'll look like a hypocrite. But he is load man. No, he's not. Yes, you know it, and Skip, I know it. You, what the difference is, one guy, Kawhi has missed 13 of 58 games. So he's basically missing once every four and a half, one every four, four and a half games. Been doing it his whole career. See, but see, but see, you said it like that's a good thing. What happened to okay, you? But, but you bought it. You, you I ain't buy it. it. They did. They paid for that. They knew he did it in Toronto last year and won the championship. But the, but the, same, but, same schedule, but the, exactly. But the, but the guy that you have the most respect for and you love the most, Michael Jordan, and you tell me how many times he played 80 ga 82 it, games. It, it, it was a different time, and it was a different mentality. Uh, Is Kawhi Leonard any good? Was he any great last night? He was great last night on both ends of the Oh, oh so he was great. 7-17, seven 1-6 seven, from the three-point line. You like that? 24-14 and 14 to work. Did he lead the team in both categories? Yes, he, he did. He did, and was the only player on the Clippers that was minus. How that work, Jenny? Go, I'm trying to figure that out. Go read Doc's quotes about what he did to Devin Booker. He destroyed it. I don't need He to... was focused on the defensive end. He can defend at a level LeBron never thought about defending. Don't, don't do that, Skip. No, no I'm no, doing no, no, no. I just oh, no, did oh, it. No. Oh, no. Oh, back, come on. Back when he was, his last couple of years hey. in Cleveland. Hey. No. Oh, Skip, no. The first time around uh, when let's he do, left Cleveland. Let's do Kawhi's last couple of years in San Antonio. Skip. Good Lord, have you mercy. Uh, do you remember? Hold on. Do you remember? When uh, they robbed him out of that MVP mm. and gave it to Derrick Rose, mm. and he said, oh, and Spolter say, go, handle that, mm. and shut it down, you know he should have won that MVP, the, uh, defensive player of the year in 2013. Skip, I just want to know one thing. How can Mark Gasol win defensive player of the year and not first team all NBA? Jenny, how is that possible? How can you win the MVP in football and not be first team all pro? Back on track, back to the point at hand. My biggest problem with LeBron is just own it. 
And my biggest problem, I'm going to go back one more time to what happened on Monday at Staples. LeBron was not visible at Kobe's memorial. Right. And we're still not sure exactly what happened because LeBron wouldn't own it the next day. Right. He was circumspect about it. He was a little evasive. Right. He wouldn't say exactly what happened. He wanted to change the subject back to how great Vanessa was, and she was all-time great. Correct. We know that. Yes. And yet, if he had just said what Paul George said, Paul George not there. He's certainly not on LeBron's level. Right. LeBron is the face of this league. Nobody cared about Paul. The face of, he, nobody cared. Nobody cared. Nobody noticed that Paul wasn't there. But we all noticed quickly. What? We hadn't seen LeBron's him not. What, because what? here's the thing, and I'm glad LeBron didn't say, "Well, I was, I wasn't," because then he would have given in to what everybody else wants. LeBron James, you do you grieve in the matter that you did okay, the that's best fine. And I told you. you I'm not going to criticize him, but I just wanted to hear him say that nope. wound has not closed for me. If he'd said that, I he think, said it. No, he didn't. He, yes, he did. He said he skipped. He said it after that. He said there'll never be closure for me. Okay, but he didn't specify that's Doesn't why he wasn't you there on Monday. Well, no, well, just tell me Mm-mm. what happened. Mm-mm. He could say I woke up that morning and I just couldn't do it, and I'd say, great, I got it. He was but in, he didn't say that. He was in his place. He, what does that mean? He was, he was in, his, in his, place. his place. Where is his place? A safe place. Safe dealing place. with the issue. Okay. Yes. And, and it, now it opens the door for me to start wondering, was he just being a diva? Did he want to uh, become no, 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 the no. story? Did, no. Because he became the story no, after the story. He did. Mm-mm. You know it and I know it. Mm-mm. There's a responsibility as the face of the franchise and the face of the league. No, that's Kawhi. To be front and center. That's Kawhi. At that. Stop it. Well, he was there. Kawhi yeah, was okay. There, right? well, so it was good. The first okay. franchise. Uh, and, first, and it, yeah. I told you Monday, it, 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 my imagination runs away. Was it because they told him, we don't need you to speak today because we've got Michael Jordan and Shaq and Rob Polinka is going to speak yeah. for us because he's Kobe's lifelong friend and godfather of Gigi? Mm-hmm. You know, okay. Is that what happened? I don't know what happened because he's evasive. Mm-hmm. And once again, this is not exactly the truth of what's happening against Golden State. I don't believe he has a suspect groin. Yep. I don't believe it. Yeah, maintenance. Yeah, okay. I mean. Load management maintenance, yeah. that's fine. 13 versus 2 is different, you know? It yeah. is. It is different, though. And no yeah. other sport do people load manage. Yeah. No mm. other why sport. Did it, I don't know any athlete. And why have, you become, why have you become so accepting of this? Because you weren't like I, this when I, LeBron did it. I accepted it when he was a rookie in San Antonio. No, no, you accept it from him, but you don't accept it from LeBron. Okay, but he backs it up, and then LeBron has basically, between the lines, called him out, and now he looks like a hypocrite if he load manages. Because he knows in his heart of hearts it's the smart way to go. You say Kawhi's backed it up. Do you realize what LeBron has done with the eight finals, the three MVPs? He's about to be a what? A 13-time first-team All-NBA. Yep. I also think that man has been as blessed with health as any superstar who ever came down the pike. That is the most durable superstar I have ever seen in all my years. And that's a thank you, God, because you can't do it all on your own. You got to have, you know, some break. You got to have some luck there, right? Oh, yeah, but, you know, okay. the thing, he's got tremendous health, tremendous durability. He plays at a high level for 17 years. Okay. Oh, yeah, but he can't shoot free throws. Well, he can't. But Kawhi Leonard, not blessed with health like this guy, <laughs> because I am told he's got two arthritically bad knees that just plague him on a nightly basis. He's got some back issues. He's got some issues. He can't stay healthy like that guy can. Yeah. So he's just and saying. he can't play at a high level like that guy can consistently, like that guy can. But that's none of my wait, business. Two MVPs in the finals? Really? I mean, it's two more than three? Huh. Well, it's getting close. Yeah, yeah, and, and by three. the way, we're, we're coming up quicker on another one, and he just might be a third MVP. In the and we final. might be a fourth. Uh. <laughs> and we might be a fourth. Well, you might be three and six in the finals right now, so I hope I, it gets better. I, I see four and six. Really? Yeah. No mercy. The Rockets? have found a groove and won their fifth straight game. James Harden and Russell Westbrook dismantled the Grizzlies last night in their 140-112 win. Harden had 30 points and Westbrook had a game-high 33. And after the game, though, all the talk was about their defense. Harden said the Rockets are finally figuring it out defensively, and that will be the key to winning a title. So, Skip, on a scale of 1-10, to what shot do you give the Rockets to win the West? You can laugh if you want. 
I am all the way up to a five, which is pretty high. Okay. I'm getting up in that 50-50 range okay. because I am getting more intrigued by the night. Okay. The rockets right before your eyes are launching, or maybe I should say relaunching post Capella trade. And to me, what is happening between Russell Westbrook and James Harden is all time amazing because I had some doubt about it. Now I have none. They are working together. They are clicking. They are vibing. They are catalyzing right before your very eyes against all odds because these are the two most ball dominant players of their whole era. If you just look back at usage rate, how much the ball's been in your hands, just remember this. Russ led this whole league in usage rate in 2014, 15, 16, and 17, and James Harden led in usage rate in 18 and 19. And you're telling me, wait a minute, fire and water are going to go to... No. Yes, they are. (laughs) They've done a great job thus far. They are two legit childhood friends Mm -hmm. who, who appear to me to truly love each other to the point they're willing to sacrifice at this stage of their careers for the one thing neither has, a championship. They have every individual kind of accolade yep. you could ever want. Yep. We're about to talk to Mark Anthony Green on this show. He is the interviewer extraordinaire who's done so many big superstar cover stories for GQ, and he's got a new one, cover story, Russell Westbrook, James Harden. Later in the piece, which we'll discuss, Russell Westbrook says, we have everything individually, that w- I'm paraphrasing, but he says, we have more things individually than anybody in this league has. Well, LeBron has played nine finals, and he does have three, three MVPs. He, well, four regular yeah, season, three right. finals. Okay, four <laughs> regular season MVPs. But what, what Russell is talking about is, in effect, I led this league in triple do- – I mean, I, I had three straight triple doubles. Seasons. Os- Oscar had one, yeah, yeah. For, for the season. Yeah. Right. Nobody's ever done that. Right. And James Harden just revolutionized how <laughs> offensive <laughs> basketball is played, and most of us agree, oh, yeah, he's the greatest offensive player ever. I still would go Michael Jordan right. just on power and guts and right. will. But, but still, he invented a shot – Nobody had ever seen before, and I thought it was walking, yep. and now everybody does it. The step e- back. Everybody added the everybody, step back. You right? see Jason Tatum, you see LeBron, every, everybody's like, doing last it. Last night I'm watching Luca destroy my Spurs, and all he does is shoot step back threes. That's it. Because you don't need to jump, you can just step back, back and shoot it. You yep. don't have to shoot a jump shot, it's a set shot, yep. right? Yeah. Okay, so they have done those things individually, but they have no championship, right. and they're willing to sacrifice. But something is happening right before your very eyes. The Rockets are slowly becoming Russell Westbrook's team. They got rid of their center so that Russ has now a super highway to the basket. And he's on it. Because if you look at the whole year and usage rate for the league, the whole year together, Harden is still third in the league and Russ is fifth. Mm -hmm. So they both sacrificed some Some. from one to go down. Since the Capella trade, that's eight games, all of a sudden James has fallen to ninth in usage rate while Russ has risen to second. Mm -hmm. Russ is taking over games. Russ took 24 shots last night against Memphis to only 16 for James Harden, Mm -hmm. and James seems totally fine with it. Yes. Is James still probably going to lead this league in scoring? Probably. Absolutely. Probably, (laughs) unless he falls off the tree somehow. But I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. So, to me, remember with the owner... Fertitta said mm-hmm. last week he made a strong case that none of us, the, the, those looking up at the Lakers, Clippers, Denver, none of us fear the Lakers, Clippers, or Denver the way we did Golden State. Well, they don't. No. They just don't. So the Rockets are looking at it like, yeah, we can go small and we still have a shot because we have two of the greatest forces mm-hmm. we've ever seen. Right. Nobody's ever played harder right. than Russell Westbrook. Right. Because if they did advantage, Skipper, you make a, a compelling point when you gave them a five, is that the thing that they for, they're forcing teams to do, because when Dan Tony says, we're going to play this small lineup, we're going to force you to blink before we do. Mm-hmm. So in other words, what he means by that, you might start two bigs, but before long, guess what? You're going to be playing eye height. You're going to yeah. be playing 6'6", six, six guys, yeah. where we decide, have a decided mm-hmm. advantage. What yeah. Golden State could do, yeah. okay, play small. Who are you going to deal with Kevin Durant? Okay. 
And so now we bring in Iggy. We could take Looney or we could take a big off the floor. Okay, we'll play with you like that mm -hmm. in Draymond because this is what they did all the time. Dray, they're playing what Golden State did for years. Draymond was the five mm -hmm. at six foot seven, six foot six. And so then they put, and obviously they had KD, but KD wasn't the five. Draymond was the five. Yep. Skip, I'm going to give it a three, but I will concede this. I didn't think this thing was going to work once they got rid of Capella. Uh, it, and I, it might work in the regular season. But you know one thing. Kawhi coined the phrase last year, said, board man, get paid. Mm -hmm. If you don't get rebounds in the regular postseason, no. you're going home. Okay. I'm looking at the Memphis game last night, Skip. Uh, Skip. The only advantage that they have is they have seven-foot uh, seven tall Valanchunas. Well, they got him shooting jumpers. You got six-foot-five uh, 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 P.J. Tucker mm -hmm. playing him at his back. Did. And y'all jacking up threes like them. And the next thing you know, they take him out the court. And so now we're a level playing field because all of your guys are six foot seven. Mm -hmm. What Russ is doing, the reason why Russ is getting off more shots, Skip, he gets the ball, he gone. He anyway, hey, don't even worry about it. Hey, y'all can stay back there if you want to. Skip, he going to the bucket. He cut down on all, shooting all those threes. He's, he's hitting that mid-range game. Stop. Shooting three. <laughs> he yeah, did. He gave in on a team that only shoots threes and said, you know what? Not my strength. Right. Yeah. Everybody else, I mean, Covington, everybody else, Tucker, House, all you guys, uh, McLemore, y'all shoot the threes. Yep. Me, I'm driving to the back. It, either I'm getting a 15-footer or I'm getting to the rack. Mm -hmm. Skip, I mean, there are times, right? Let me look at this. It's a one-on-two to the basket. One-on-three to the basket. And he's making, he's finishing mm -hmm. every play. Mm -hmm. And when a um, uh, uh, misses comes off, he's battling six foot six guys for the rebound tipper to get in. But Skip, I'm gonna say it's a three because I believe that the, what can what's gonna hurt them, the Lakers are big, and I believe they'll punish them down low. I believe the Clippers. Now they match up really well with the Clippers for whatever reason. They seem to have a Clippers number. They do. The Nuggets will give them problems because Jokic. You're not putting P.J. PJ Tucker on Jokic at the end of the Because he's going to go down. He's going to punish you, Skip. Okay, but conversely, Jokic is going to have a hard time on the other end. I put, put him on P.J. Tucker. Because okay. P.J. Tucker's not going to put the ball on the floor and try to get around you. He can shoot corner threes. Yes. You're going to have to get out there and get a hand up, and it's going to take you out of the I'm a, I'm center a, of attention. You know what? I'm gonna let, I want P.J. Tucker to lead the team in scoring. Yeah. Because I know with it, if you let Russ get 30, you let James Harden get 30, what's happening, Skip, both of these guys are getting 30. That's the problem that you're having because you remember when um, the Lakers, they played the Lakers. Russ went for 40. James had an off night, but Russ got it going. Got it going. And now you're in trouble. You better let some, make somebody else beat you. In fact, my friend Tim Legler at ESPN said last night, uh -huh. Russell Westbrook is playing the best basketball of his career I, right I now. I can agree with that. Okay, that's a mouthful. I yes. love Tim. He's yes. a smart guy. That's a mouthful. Nothing seems forced. Woo. Skip, there are times that he was getting no triple doubles. He was forcing shots. He was jacking up unnecessary threes. Now he's going to the basket. He's shooting that mid-range. He'll drop it off because, what, he have like eight or nine assists last night. Yep, he did. So he's playing phenomenal. James Harden is like, I just, I mean, I'm looking up and I'm like, it seems like James Harden just made another three. And the next thing you know, Skip, he's five or eight. And that's what happens. Now, for me, they beat the Lakers by shooting threes because they made 19 of them. Now, if you all bets off, they're going to make those kind of threes totally in the playoffs. They're all bets off. not going to happen every right. playoff game. Right. But I believe big team, the Lakers, which are huge, will punish them down low. I, I, I get it. You know, you still got AD and LeBron. Mm -hmm. And LeBron probably, Skip, mm -hmm. is going to have to play a lot more out of the post. Mm-hmm. To punish P.J. Tucker, because they normally Good. put P.J. Tucker on him. Good. I'll give you that. LeBron's going to have a big advantage. Yes. And he's going to have to take advantage AD's of it. AD's going to have a big advantage. Maybe. Maybe not as big as LeBron. Well, who's going to play AD? He's to play somebody smaller. Okay, remember, if, if need be, they have Tyson Chandler sitting there on the bench. You can do it if you need in stretches to bother somebody. Right. Okay? So, what did they all rave about after the game last night? They jumped ahead at halftime 73 to 34 on Memphis. It was about 40, like 40 to 40. They had another Clippers another game. like that. I agree. They all talked about, for the first time maybe in their lives, their defense. Mm -hmm. James was talking. We're finally getting there defensively, and that's what it's going to take for us to win games. Defensive end, commitment. They're, they're scrappy on defense because Russell and James can be nasty, scrappy, Get a lot shrewd of defender with their hands. Mm -hmm. They're all over everywhere deflecting balls and disrupting. 
And last night, I watched the whole first half, and I was in awe mm. of how hard they were all playing on defense. Maybe ignited by Robert Covington, yep. who's been first team all right. defense in right. the past, right. and they added him. Right. And Jeff Green will come off the bench, and he will get up in he you, will. right? He had some big shots last yeah. night also. Yeah, and so did Austin Rivers. Boy, he was just cooking last night. He, he, he was. 9 of 12 and 4 of 7 from 3, and Macklemore shoots threes like crazy. Mm -hmm. They have a very interesting mix right. of players. One big one way down at the end of the bench, but to me – Again, have I ever trusted Russell and James in huge playoff games? I have not. Right. But we'll get to this when Mark Anthony Green yeah. joins us from GQ. There was one other great quote in there. Mm -hmm. James said that on the court, I stay in my box, meaning within my own emotions, because he shows none. Nothing bothers right? me. Nothing bothers they me. They're doing all that talking and so carrying he, on. He just ignores. It's like he's aloof. He's yeah. just above it all. Yeah. And yet, Rough. Russell said... I tend to lose it. I well, stay out of my box. <laughs> yeah, he stays out of his box. But the fire and the ice tend to, right. to mix, and, and, and they're good for each other right. because Russ has brought a little bit more out of James, but James will lead Russ. Remember when he ran up to him right. and said, use your head, right? Because right? right? think about it, Skip. Last night, Russ got another tech. He got another because he's out like, of nowhere. Every yeah. time he, you know, he's doing this or he's doing know. that, he's staring at the guy, and it's like, but that's him. That's him. That's him. Okay. Somehow it's working in the weirdest, craziest, all-time, you know, sort of intriguing way right. I've ever seen. Because I don't know if we've ever had two stars of the same ilk blend like this right. and make a team viable. Right. That's what's happened. Right. Given their history, yeah. and oh. I love – it's such a great article, which we will get into. Will. But it is interesting just right. how far back they go. Uh, they will face the Celtics tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. Ooh, because be the interesting. skip, because like Dan Tony says, they're forcing teams to blink first. They might start with a center, and the next thing you know, Valanciunas is on the bench, and yep. they're playing their style of ball. And that's what team – because remember, Skip, they thought they could beat Golden State – Playing their style of ball. Well, we're going to shoot threes and we're going to play yada, yada, yada. And we're going to punish them inside with Capella. Yep. So I guess Murray thinks now that, you know what, maybe if we didn't have Capella all those years and we had a situation like this, we might could have. I just think they have a better chance this way than that way. Right. Maybe it's still a small chance, but I give them a shot. I, I'm surprised it's working this well. I thought CP3, but it seems like CP3 is happier in OKC. Easy. And Russ is doing unbelievable in Houston. No mercy. Breaking news this morning has reports that there is a buzz around the NFL Combine that Brady will indeed leave New England this offseason. Yesterday, it was reported that the Giants could pursue the 42-year-old QB. And on Tuesday, former Patriots assistant and new Giants head coach Joe Judge said the best players will play for his team. And he does not care how old or young his players are. He only cares if they can contribute. Uh, Shannon, could you see Brady heading to the Giants? No, but this news that we're hearing, I think Jeff Darlington reported like he would be stunned if he returned. I think the Athletic had some guy was reporting mm -hmm. it also yep. at the buzz as Jenny read it's about the, the reporter who covers the Raiders. Right. He's okay. hearing big buzz right. that Tom Brady's gone. Right. He's moving. Right. Uh, you and I just been talking about that since the beginning of the season. Yeah. So it's not earth-shattering yeah. news to us. Nope. People just thought we were crazy just trying to create a story. We've been that, talking about it for months. Yes. And, uh, but, Skip, for me, it doesn't make any sense to me because, look, they have okay weapons. Uh, I like Slate. I think Darius Slayton is his name, yeah. or one wide receiver. Yeah, they sure. have Golden Tate. They have Evan Ingram, Sterling Shepard. But that offensive line is terrible. It's terrible. Why, why would he – he got beat up last year. Why would he go to a place – the one thing I'm going to want, yeah, I want weapons, but I need yep. some protection so I can throw the ball to those weapons. Yep. That, that makes no sense to me, Skip. We got to stop this notion. Oh, we would really like him to come to our team, so let's throw that out there. Well, hell, since they throw, everybody throw it, let him come to the Broncos. <laughs> now nah, we good with Drew Lock. Lock, got that thing locked up. We don't need it. If you well, have wait, wait, wait a second. Drew Lock. Tom Brady. Drew Lock, Tom Brady, Drew Lock. Lock. Drew Lock got that thing locked up. Clack, clack. Is he? Yep. Lock it up. I don't buy it. And plus, we building for something. Mm. We ain't finna get rid of no 22 year old for a 43 year old. Where they do that at? Even <laughs> if I told you you could win next year's Super Bowl? Okay, Drew. You'll be okay sitting yeah. on the <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> but Skip, that's the thing. You know, I, I just don't see it. Oh, well, Joe Judge is there. Skip, how much contact, how much, you know, how much uh, uh, talking to do you think Tom Brady did with Joe Judge, mm. who was a receiver's coach, and I think at one point in time he was a sports special teams coordinator. Yeah. Come on, man, stop this. 
Tom Brady is – look, when Peyton came out, um, and I know Peyton very well, there are only a handful of teams. Peyton talked to the 49ers. He talked to the Broncos. He talked to the Titans. He talked to the Cardinals. Now, the Titans had the most appealing because they could give him something I don't think any of the other teams – Offer him part ownership. Offer him as soon as you're done, you get a media GM role or whatever you want. But he chose the Broncos because they had a nice offensive line that we can get back. Got Vasquez at guard. They had a true left tackle in Ryan Clady and the weapons. We know about that. Plus, Skip, they went to the playoff the year before he got there and won a playoff game. They did. And, and he's like, oh, Tim Tebow. Yeah. You know, oh, see, yep. they, there you go. You, you, you brought it up. No, I didn't bring up anything. I just said they won a playoff game. I didn't mention the quarterback Tim won. Tebow. So, they Skip, did. look, I, I, and I don't see the Giants doing it. Skip, they just took a quarterback with the sixth pick in the draft. They got rid of the guy that won them two Super Bowls. Well, they didn't get he retired, but the writing was on the wall. You're not going to start. If you want to stay here to be a backup, and he didn't want to be a backup. So, I don't see this happening. It's pie in the, you know, Skip, it's pie in the sky. And I don't even know what, it's probably rhubarb pie because there ain't no kind of pie anybody's going to eat. Mm. So, back to the Giants first. The New York Giants would offer Tom Brady one thing and one thing only, New York yeah, yeah, City. Yes. Yeah. He is a New York City kind of guy. His I'm, wife is a New York Skip, if I'm kind not mistaken, I Skip, yeah. he got his house on the market, but he does have a place. I don't know if it's in Chelsea or if it's in Soho. He does have a place there. I thought it was in Westchester, but he might have oh. both. They yeah. used yeah. to have a place in... Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah, because okay. Jay Z and, and uh, uh, who else? The actor, I forget his name. Yeah, I, I think, I think Chelsea's of it. in Manhattan That's and nice. Westchester. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, De Niro. De Niro. De Niro. De Niro. De Niro. I, I got it. Okay. So, arguably, you might want to get a place closer to New Jersey, to where the practice facility <laughs> yes. is, or to the stadium. Right. But whatever they can afford it. Right. So that would be the only appeal to New York City, uh, to the, the Giants would be right. New York City, right. because. The team is not good enough. No, just not, not even close. Enough. Nope. And Dave Gettleman, I know he's done some good things in this league. He always comes off a little goofy to me. <laughs> and I'm not sure that Tom would want to join forces with that. Right. And finally, you, you look at what's the legacy there? The legacy is that Eli beat him twice in Super Bowls. Right. So would he want to try to fill Eli's shoes? <laughs> you know, like, like it's, it's the wrong fit. Right. And it would come across like, well, Tom, if you couldn't beat him, you finally joined him, right. right? Yes. That's not Tom Brady's M.O. He has too much pride for that, and he wouldn't want to – what if he went and they missed the playoffs next year right. and people said, well, Eli could have done better than this, right? You know that's, you know that's going to happen. Right? Okay. So now back to my big-picture point. What, what this continues to fuel is what I continue to tell you, that – If, in fact, Tom Brady hits the open market, Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the open market on March the 18th. Well, he's hitting it. At 4 p.m. Eastern. Right. It is going to be chaos. It will be hysteria. It will be the sky is falling all around the league because it still, for me, is like Michael Jordan becoming a free agent after winning the championship in 1998 Mm -hmm. in Chicago. Right. He's at the end of his prime, but still barely inside his prime. And I still believe Tom Brady can take a good team to a championship. But see, the thing is, you're thinking rational and Tom Brady, but all these teams like, oh, Tom Brady's a free agent. Look, there's only a handful of teams that have a realistic chance of signing him. Everybody, every, just because he's free, Skip, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean the other 30, 30, you know, obviously, you know, Seattle and Green, but there are yep. certain teams that's not going to be interested. Mm-hmm. But there are not going to be 25 teams that have a realistic chance. I believe there are no, probably no more than three, four teams that have a realistic chance. But how many do you think will try? At least oh, yeah, try yeah, yeah. A whole bunch. Maybe more than half the teams <laughs> will at least attempt to say, hey, they, they might even try to outbid for him, right. right? Well, Skip, you, you know a lot of teams tried to get in contact with Tom Condon, who was the agent of Peyton Manning. You know that. But he ne- he willed it down very, very, very early. Mm-hmm. Except Peyton had an injury ring hanging over him that was huge. Yes. Because and, he had to get fusion at the top of his spine, right? Right, right. He missed an entire missed season. Entire season. So there was a whole injury risk question. And still, Will t- he ever be Peyton again? And that's the thing, Skip. Tom Brady does not have an injury history. He is just going to be 43 at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. They really didn't know what they were going to get. I right. mean, the Broncos gave him the most money in the NFL, 
and he could only throw the ball 10 yards. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, Crazy. so you don't have that risk going here. No! Tom got beat up last year right. because his offensive line wasn't very good and he didn't have any receiver he could separate. But we believe he could throw the ball okay. farther than 10 yards. He could throw it farther <laughs> than 10 yards, and we believe he's relatively healthy. Yes! And we believe that he's kind of reinvented the way to create longevity right. at that position. Correct. And if you can get rid of the ball quickly, you can stay relatively healthy. Correct. And I don't know if pliability works, but it does for him. It, that's all he, that matters. He believes it. That's it. Right? And I don't know if his diet works, but it works for him. Correct. Right? I don't know if avocado ice cream is the answer, but it is for Tom Brady. <laughs> and he looks to me, his arm strength did not diminish last year. Mm -hmm. His quickness of release did not diminish okay. last year. So all of a sudden, with the wealth of knowledge, the all-time wealth in his brain, if if you could get him for a reasonable price, because I don't think he's going to demand huge money. Well, what's he's not out to break any banks. You don't think he, he want at least thirty mil? Thirty, okay. But but what no. if he? What if in the perfect situation? I don't know. I, again, Cowboys, Chargers, 49ers, that they all could say, let's let's go Tom Brady for two years because we're on the verge. And Tom could say, you know what? You are on the verge, and I believe, let's do my hometown team, the 49ers. Would you cut bait with Jimmy G? He'd probably wind back up with Belichick, right? Yeah. Would you cut bait and, and let me come here and try to win two championships for you? Yes, we would do that. Well, he might say, I'll take $20 million. It's not like he needs the money, mm. right? Yeah. I'm, that's what people like, you know, I don't need any more money. I don't need any less either. Uh, Skip, it's easy to say. I, I mean, it, obviously, it makes his job a lot easier when you have a wife that's worth an estimated four hundred million and brings in about thirty million herself for a year. Um, I don't. I don't see. I don't see him. Like I said, I believe there's a handful of team. I believe, like I said, a handful. Well, you're probably right, but there's going to be way more than a handful. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah, try yeah, to yeah. offer him forty-five million. Skip, it was like it was like when KD. Mm -hmm. Now you and I, when KD, KD was a free agent last year. Yeah. Even with the Achilles injury, mm -hmm. everybody lined up to try to sign KD. Heck yes. But yes. we already knew there were only a handful of teams. It. Knicks, Nets. Like it's reported, Tampa Bay would love to get Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, would. they would. I bet you would. And they're, they're not a bad team. Yes. They'd be okay. Okay. Yes. But for what price? If they said, we'll give you $50 million a year, would he think about it? I doubt it. I, yeah. yeah. Because at the end of the day, Skip, it's not about money with Tom. Yeah. If you, if you are correct, believe he has a year to two years left, it's about how soon can he get to and win a title because he's on the clock. He, do You and I know this, and he knows it, and the other guy that's the coach at the place that he looks like he's about to leave, yep. they're in a race. And the race is who can get to Lombardi first. Yeah. That's it. Period. That's it. End of it story. ain't about no money. Nope. Somebody can offer him $100 million. But if you don't give me a chance to beat Coach Belichick to that destination, what good is it? Right. And so Tom is thinking – I, I got to maximize my ability Absolutely. to win next year's, yeah. next year's championship yes. while watching Bill Belichick maybe try to win with Jared Stidham. Yep. Okay? Yep. And good luck. Yep. That's it. That's, that's, the, only thing, that's the only thing that matters. No mercy. Jason Tatum led the Celtics to a 114-103 to win versus the Jazz last night. Tatum had 33 points and 11 rebounds in the win. It's the third straight game that Tatum has scored at least 30 points while shooting 60% or better. The Celtics have now won 11 of their last 13 and are only one game back of the two seed in the East. Yahoo Sports senior NBA insider Chris Haynes back with us this morning. So good to have you. Thank you for joining us. So, in your opinion, what shot do you give Tatum of leading the Celtics to the Eastern Conference title? Hmm. Okay. I, I give them – they have a legitimate shot. Okay. I, I would say – if I'm saying – if I'm talking one through ten – uh, I give them a seven. Really? I, that's I, pretty high. I, I, that's pretty high. Yeah. And the reason I give them a seven is I think they're the only team that I really believe will give the Milwaukee Bucks a serious okay. threat to represent the East in the finals. Um, but the way Jason Tatum is playing right now, this is why he's such a scary prospect for a lot of guys out there on the court. I was talking with C.J. McCollum a couple days ago, and he was talking about the one of the things that first stood out when he saw um, Tatum up close was how tall and long he is. Really? He's really a guard. But he's 6'9", 6'10", six, six, long arms, and he... he that's, they list him at 8. But this is my 8. Oh, really? He, he, look. He's long. He's, yeah. he's real long, yeah. And I, I think that's probably has some stuff to it. But I will say this about Tatum. Like, everybody around the league, when I talk, you're talking to star players, 
they say, man, he has the most star potential out there out of young prospects. As far and you, you haven't even we haven't even seen his full potential. He was playing, you know, the first year he's playing. You know, it wasn't the first year, but Kyrie was kind of, you know, lost in the shuffle, couldn't f figure out his way. And I remember that playoff game he had when he dunked on LeBron James right there. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was, I think, I believe that was his rookie year. It was. Yeah, it oh, yeah. was rookie year. And he, he was, you know, it was that was just a sign of promise. I think he yelled at LeBron and kind of bumped him after yeah. that. Right. You know what I mean? So he, he got a little swag to him, you know. So, <laughs> you know, so I, I think right now if if they continue to, to feed him, my only concern is that when Kimba Walker – Comes gets back. Cuts back. How was that going to work with him? Because he struggled okay. when he had Kyrie, yeah. when he had had to share that ball. But now he's being his own. And but you know, as of right now, he's looking good. And so I'm interested to see how he plays when the whole team is around. I don't give them much of a chance of beating Milwaukee. Hmm. Um, Skip, Milwaukee is just they're the number three <laughs> offensive rating. They have the number one defensive rating. Skip, they're on pace to have the fourth best point differential mm -hmm. in the history. Now we talk about a better than the Golden State Warriors with KD. Mm -hmm. Their point differential is better to be that. Yep. He has a second sidekick, and we don't think much of Chris Middleton, but Chris Middleton can play. Mm -hmm. He can really play skip. I mean, and when we talk about second, you know, their Robbins, he never gets mentioned. But he's an all-star, two-time all-star. So he can he can really play. Mm -hmm. Jason Tatum, we saw this. If you remember his rookie year when Kyrie went down, mm -hmm. he took off and went to game seven against the Cavs. Mm -hmm. Last year, Kyrie comes back. He lost up in the shuffle because no one really knows their role. Kyrie got the ball. He passed it whenever he wants to. They removed Kyrie from the equation. Even with Kimba, who they better fit, mm -hmm. you see, like, okay, now, okay, now I see. Kimba goes down. Oh, now I really, really see what everybody saw. Now I guess Magic probably looking like, damn, Lonzo, Jason Taylor. But you had Ink B.I. So you, do you really want two of the same people? Because that's what really what they are. Yeah, because Paul George and Kawhi are the same people, Skip. You can find a way. If you get that yeah. kind of talent, Skip, you should find a way to make it work. Skip, and that's the only thing. I, I just think nobody has seemed to have found an answer for Giannis. And even when you hold him down, he ends up with 20 points, 20 rebounds, and 8 assists. Mm -hmm. If you don't hold him down, he ends up with 33 points, 18 rebounds, and 4 assists. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they have a... It can, and every time I think, okay, Boston, Boston, man, Skip, I watch Toronto. They're not going anywhere. Nick Nurse has them playing. Pascal Siakam has been unbelievable. Kyle Lowry, they, they throw a lot of different people at you, Skip, and just when I thought, and they play Milwaukee tough. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Maybe they got the blueprint, but they play Milwaukee tough. They force Giannis to shoot his worst field goal percentage they when they play him. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very interesting them see them fight it out, but I don't believe the Boston Celtics. I don't believe anybody can unseat the, the Bucks right now. So, my friend Chris Haynes made a very astute point to start off with. It's very interesting. When Kyrie was there, Jason Tatum wasn't. Mm -hmm. He hung back. He he was a little pouty to me. He couldn't figure. He couldn't find his place. And to your point, Kim has been out for a while, and. The best game I ever saw Jason Tatum play was Sunday at Staples mm -hmm. because he was just going one on three. After a while, Vogel's just saying, just go get him. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're just sitting the everybody yeah. at him. Seriously, sometimes in the second half, three Lakers were chasing him, and he would still score. Make him give it up. It was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. He's another young man who was mentored and coached by Kobe Bryant. I believe he's inspired by mm -hmm. Kobe, and I think he was really inspired on Sunday at Staples yep. by the memory of Kobe no. Bryant. He is emerging as a superstar yeah. on both ends of the court. Mm -hmm. He can defend at a high level. They're interesting because he's really their tallest. He, he's their tallest starter right, for yeah. sure. Right. So yeah. they're going small ball almost like Houston is right. when you because mm -hmm. Tice is their center and he's six eight. Right. right. So they, they, they were doing it first. Skip, they were doing Houston, it. Yeah. They right. were doing it when Kimba comes back. They go yeah. really small. Really, right. Really small. Yep. Okay. So they're trying to do the the Rockets right. method in the East. Now to the team you brought up. The Bucks don't get nearly enough credit because nobody <laughs> they, they seems yeah. to care about this team. Yeah. It seems to have no it factor. Yeah. There's there's nothing provocative or intriguing right. about it at right. all. Right. But it is becoming Golden State without the star power. Right. And Giannis, God bless him, he plays so hard every night, every possession. Yeah. But 
he's Greek, so he's not from here, and right. it's kind of hard for everybody to get their arms around him. Correct. Right. And he's come up small in, in big in moments. Big moments, yeah. and so it's hard to get past that. It's hard to buy completely into right. his superstardom, his dominance, because we haven't seen it at a high really enough level most, yeah. yet. Correct. Yeah. But this team is, to your point, it's doing things that, that are all-time, all-time great because just listen to this, just off the top. This is what Boston's going to be up against. The Bucks are number one in scoring in the NBA. They're number one in rebounding in the NBA, number one in defensive efficiency in the whole league, number one in pace. This is the fastest team in basketball, yep. the Bucks. Mm-hmm. And they what? shoot the fourth most threes. And they shoot the fourth most threes. <laughs> they only make in percentage 14th, but, but they're shooting so many that they can just blow you. They can run you off the court, and they can shoot you off the court. Yep. All, all at once. Their, their one Achilles heel is their 27th in free throw percentage, but the Lakers are 29th, so maybe it's a wash yeah. Yeah. if it ever gets to that, right? So it's going to be a lot of fouling down the street. Because, Skip, when you look, at, you look at their defense, you look at Brooke Lopez, mm-hmm. block shots. Giannis can challenge you. They're second in block. Robin yeah. Lopez yeah. Mm-hmm. can challenge you at the rim. Yep. Middleton plays defense. Brogdon, uh, uh, Brogdon. Bledsoe, can yeah. get, uh, Bledsoe can get into you. So it's going to be tough. And, and, and all of a sudden, the, the two white kids coming off the bench, yeah. Connor yeah. can jump out of the gym. Yeah. and he, catch him out left and right. Listen, D. Vincenzo, yes. the, the, what was he, Delaware's Michael Jordan or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, he can play. And he can <laughs> leap. And they yeah. lead in rebound and skip because they're so tall. Giannis is getting... Giannis is getting... I mean, I'm, you look up and Giannis got 20 rebounds. Right. I'm like, how? 18 rebounds. And to your point about Milwaukee, they go so much under the radar. They're having a historical season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I don't want to get off topic a little bit, but when you're talking about MVP, the MVP award at the end of the year... I could see a scenario to where Milwaukee just keeps going on the radar, winning games, but take the Lakers and take LeBron. If LeBron has two weeks of dominance and, you know, some way, I don't, I don't say catch the Bucks in the record, but just get somewhere along there, okay. but have about three or four or five memorable games in Maybe. the last stretch. Maybe. That's that last impression. Mm-hmm. That that kind of sways voters. And when six, let, Skip, because yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. Skip, remember yeah. the, what was the over under? Like fifty one games. Yeah. Let's just say for the sake of argument, the Lakers win sixty. Okay. Sixty one ball game. Yeah. You could make a case. Yeah. LeBron's gonna be very I much mean, in the I mix. I mean, for a while, AD was was stealing votes right. back. You know, they right. were they were gonna hurt each cancel. But now each it's other clear out. cut. Now okay. there's no right. question. I, I will give you that. Chris Middleton is the most starless star I've ever seen <laughs> yeah. in all my years watching basketball. Yeah. He's now made back-to-back all-star teams. He is leading this league in three-point shooting at 44%, and nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody, cares. Right. nobody even notices yeah. because he has no star power. None. And it's not just about Milwaukee. Because I grew up in a city called Oklahoma City. Right. And when I was a kid, if you told me my city would have an NBA team, I would have laughed in your face. You're right. It was Oklahoma is a basketball state, but it's known for its football. There's no way it's going to have a basketball team. But not only did it get a pro basketball team right out of the box, it got Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook and James Harden. Three future MVPs were on the same team in my little town, Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And it put it on the map because nobody cared they were playing in little old Oklahoma City. They cared about the thunder. Did they not captivate? Yes. Did they not capture our imagination nationally? And and a lot of people in Oklahoma think they put the state on the map even more than the University of Oklahoma football, which you know very well. Okay, so it's not about Milwaukee. It's about the charisma of the team. It doesn't have it much. Doesn't, does, and, and I'll say, Skip, to my point, what I made earlier, like, and it shouldn't be that way. Like, if Milwaukee is having such an outstanding year, Giannis has been dominating all throughout, and in a quiet fashion, yeah. he should get the award. But I just know how some voters are swayed you, you, by, you know, okay. the, the Lakers get talked about a lot. LeBron has some big marquee games on national TV. Yeah. They're kind of, you know, in a way, it shouldn't be that way, okay. but that's, that's how it okay. is a lot of times. You, you got a point. Look at Middleton numbers, Skip, when Giannis doesn't play. Remember, he dropped that 51 piece. Okay. He, he hit the big shot against he did. Washington. Because yeah. they were nipping. Hey. Bradley Beal goes he, Barker. He had a couple of overtime where yeah. I was yes. like, what? Uh-huh. Yes. And for them to, to suck it up and come back and win in overtime and then back to back go now, Giannis win. Fall, Giannis fouled out that game against Washington. Yeah, skip. He did. So it, it was yeah. Middleton carrying them. Whew. That team's got basketball character. I do. And Good. that coach can coach. Who oh. knows? It might get coach of the year, but our old Frankie V. 
Oh, Frank, if he got no coaching. No, I'm going to give LeBron coaching. Uh, coach. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I am. He coaches his team. You know, Frank, he's, he's a calls. good assistant. <laughs> you said he's the one who set him out tonight, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on, Skip. Take this one out. Come on, Vogel. Skip. I'm out tonight. tonight. Vogel. We criticized him early, but they've been so good. Oh, I don't think respect. we can be hard on you. Oh, Vogel. man. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Always a pleasure. Oh, mercy. A day after hitting his first spring training home Whoa. run, oh, Tim Tebow that. said he will be playing for the Philippines in the World Baseball Classic Ooh. qualifying games next month. Tebow is able to play for the Philippines since he was born there while his parents lived in the country as missionaries. Shannon, do you like that Tebow is doing this? Really, Skip? He's back on don't, the show, don't really Shannon. Mean. Embrace it. Is this what we're No! No, I'm not okay with this, Skip. Why not? Don't take the easy way out. The easy this way is the out? E- I, I get it. Okay, I, I get it, Skip. He was born there. And he's done missionary work there. Really? So why not do this in 2017? Didn't they have the world best, uh, 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 the, the, the classic then? Mm-hmm. So why would he would have... You American. Oh, there's no chance of you actually making the American roster. Mm-hmm. So you want an opportunity to take the easy way. I see what you did there. Sk- Look, this has always been a rule that's been in, in, in effect. Um, you know, we see a lot of, ha- a lot of time with soccer players, Skip, and we've seen, yeah. you know, some of the, uh, <clears throat> see this happen a lot. I think the guy that Olympians. just broke the, the pole vault record, mm-hmm. Mond- uh, Rondo DePlantis. Um, he was born in Lafayette, Louisiana. But, Skip, he's always competed for Sweden. So this is not new. It's not all of a sudden, for the first 20 years of his life, oh, I'm in America, and then all of a sudden he goes compete for Sweden. I can't believe you. I can't believe you're okay with this, Skip. I'm I haven't not, spoken. I'm not you okay. I'm yet. not okay with this because you know he's taking a shortcut. He's trying to take the shortcut. shortcut. Lord have mercy. Shortcut. Jeez. Well, we know how Shannon feels. My turn. Yes. First point of order, Tim Tebow not only was born in the Philippines while his parents were missionaries in the Philippines, but he spent the first five years of his life in the Philippines. That qualifies, in my mind, plenty for him to play for the Philippines, especially when it so direly needs him to play for it. Why? Because right now, six teams are about to vie for two spots in what's called the WBC, right, okay, World, Baseball, World Baseball, Baseball Confederation Tournament, mm-hmm. National Championship mm-hmm. Tournament, okay? Six teams for two spots. So in the WBC rankings, the Philippines rank 32nd, which is way down the list. Right. Only one of these potential qualifying teams of the six, only one is ranked worse than the Philippines, and that's New Zealand. Five other teams are ranked better than the Philippines. And you're trying to give me easy way? He is taking the hardest way possible, trying to play for a team that probably has no shot at getting in. What about the Americans? What about Why why you don't want to play with them? Okay. You're American, right? Well, he he was born and raised up to five in the Philippines. You, he, can, can, can you think he uh, speak? I don't know the native, what they call it. Phil, what, what is it, Filipino? I Filipino. Know. I mean, can he speak that language? I'll bet he can. I, I bet, bet he, he can. speak a little bit I of bet it. I bet he can. Because he had to. You don't need the language to know the game, though. Yeah, hold on. So, they, so we, don't play, we, we, we don't play baseball in America? Well, you find uh, 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 Let me ask you okay, So first game, opening game in the qualifier in Tucson, March 20th versus the Czech Republic that is ranked 16 places higher than the Philippines. That's an easy way to go, isn't it, Shannon? That's a gimme. That's a cakewalk. First, first, first of all, way to go. I didn't know they played baseball in the Czech okay. Republic. Well, did you know they played in uh, Panama or Spain? Yes, I know Panama, Panama, Spain. Yeah, They're Panama, 13th, Spain. right? I kind of look at it based on the Little, League, the Little League World Series. Yep. <laughs> so I, when I look at that, I look at all these. So I said, okay, if they play Little League, then they probably, I, I don't you know if I've ever seen a Czech Republic team uh, uh, play on uh, play in the Little okay. League World Series, but that's not here to the skip. Stop. How the many way. players born and raised in the Philippines have played in Major League Baseball in our country? How many? How about a big zero? Wow. There's one who was born in the Philippines and and spent part of his childhood, and this is back in the '90s, right. named Bobby Chenard. Right. He was a relief pitcher who lasted five years, but he grew up in Oregon, so it's never really happened. Nobody has. They have no legacy, no history. Right. And and he's saying, yeah, I'll try that. 
Try I'll that. Do that. Boy. Yeah, I want to try that because it's an easy way for me to play in the classic. Because oh, really? I know I can't make it for an American okay. team. So, guess what Tim Tebow did? He took the easy way out after the NFL just blackballed him. Hey, stop that. They did. They blackballed him. They said, <laughs> we just can't. He's too much of a sideshow. He creates too much of a distraction. Everybody said no to Tim Tebow after all he did was take the one and four Broncos to the, the division title and a playoff win. That's all he did. And then he never got a chance to start another game in this league. So he says, you know what? At age 30, I'm going to start over and try to play professional baseball. This is the easy way out, right? Yeah. At age 30, he starts riding buses playing for the Scottsdale Scorpions. And then how about the Columbia Fireflies? And then how about the Port St. Lucie Mets? And then how about the Binghamton Rumble Ponies? And then how about last summer, the Syracuse Mets? This is the easy way. Those are all summer-long bus rides it, all around those little leagues. Anybody else that hit 163 and played as bad as he's played mm -hmm. would not be given an opportunity after opportunity to come back. Mm -hmm. You and I both know, look, the rules are what they are. If you was born in a certain, uh, I guess, a certain country and, and, and the country waves it and you want to play, okay, I get all that, Skip. But, but is that the easy way? How yes, do you call it the easy because way? Because if you're an American, don't you want to play for the American? Don't you want to represent your country? How would I feel? How would I feel? Let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip. I'm an I've lived in America all my life. But all of a sudden, through a small rule, I can go represent some other country and help that country beat America. It's I'm not, supposed to feel good about that? It's not a small rule. What if you had been born and raised age five in France? Would you go play for France? No. Yes, you would. I'm playing I right, would. You I'm would. I'm playing right here. Yeah. OK, what they got for me? What if I couldn't play for the States? Why can't you play? Because I wasn't as good oh, as yeah, some that, of the that, other that, competition, that, that, and I could play for there France. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Because we see this a I'm lot ready. of times. We see this a lot of times. I've seen people move school districts because my kid is oh, not good yeah. enough to play here, but he can play over there. I see it all over again. Do you have a problem with that? Yeah, I got a problem with it. Competition. <laughs> don't There's forget, nothing like competition. I don't want to get too deep here, but his parents felt a spiritual calling to go spread their word, their ministry in the Philippines. And they stayed there for many years oh, and they had Tim there. And then they stayed for five more years. So it's possible Tim feels like he's got a little bit of his parental calling to go back and try to help what was his native land. That no, was his native land. I didn't have a spiritual calling. That was my grandma calling and said, boy, bring your ass home and feed mm -hmm. the hogs. Okay. That's what I had. That's, that was the calling that I got. Skip, baby, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Look, now, the, you know, wait a second. The easy way is to go do TV because he can do it all yeah. day, every day. No, that's easy. Right? That, the, just skip, the, skip just now, the Skip Bayless, I know that I've come to know for the last four years, he could have taken the easy way and stayed where he was, mm -hmm. made the same money, everything. He said, no! I will start from scratch. I want to deal with this guy every day. Yeah. He's there. We're going to do this I got to put up with this every day because I need a new challenge. Lucky See? me. Yeah. See what yeah. Yeah. Now that's the skip bailers. I know. Yeah. But now he okay with somebody taking the easy way. Yeah. The easy way. Easy. I'm going to play for this the Philippines the against yeah. the Czech Republic. Way to go. Have you, thank you. They got no chance of making it. They take anybody. Hell, the Philippines asked me would I come try. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for what? For the baseball team. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right field. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh. Right field. Yeah. You know what? Tim Tebow might just become the Manny Pacquiao of Filipino oh baseball, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. so now he gonna be the Bay Ruth of the Philippines. <laughs> what did Tim yeah. Tebow do to you? I'm just Skip confused. Baylor, you ought to be Why are you so... Skip Bayless Skip Bayless dubbed the man the Bay Ruth of the Philippines. <laughs> Oh, he's the Manny Pacquiao of baseball. Because Manny, Manny is God in the Philippines. Yeah. Skip, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, this I'm, is nothing I'm like proud of myself, actually. You, the, the guy that loves competition and won't LeBron to, you don't hug people and talk and be buddy, buddy, just compete, compete, compete. Mm -hmm. And you want to go to a team that doesn't have any chance of making it, but it's easy for you to make, be on the squad. Because mm -hmm. in America, we show, I mean, we love good play, baseball players. We want them. We want more America born baseball players. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You ought to be way ashamed. to go, Tim. No, no. Do it the hard way. <laughs> just Tim Tebow that ain't no hard processing yes, it how heated it gets when we talk about Tim Tebow well, at this watch, table. Watch Tim just lift the Philippines out of nowhere into the tournament. Yeah. Watch. No. 
People watch. are gonna watch because he's on there. We got an American-born player playing on the Philippines. I mean, well, he's born, in, but he's an American playing for the Philippines. Okay, but obviously it fits in Tim's schedule because the tournament games will be played in Tucson, where spring training is taking place. So it's okay. It, it's not out of. Balance. What about spring? What about spring training? You don't want to do that, huh? No, he'll do it. That'll be part of it. Yep. By the end of the year, he's going to be a New York Mets. So. By, the, by the end of the year, he's going to be talking about SEC football. No. By the beginning of the year, that's where you're going to be. What do you always be. say on this show? You're a hater. You're a hater. No, no, you're, a hater. Remember, you're a hater. You're a, you're a hater. hater. See, that's what Jenny said. See, I told Jenny I like this certain type of water. <laughs> well, what you got against balls? <laughs> Jenny, I got nothing against balls. I, bro, uh, what? Uh, uh, what do you like go. that, Jenny? I'm going to let it go for now. I'm going to let it go, but I'm rooting for the guy. No mercy. Russell Westbrook and James Harden were reunited in Houston this season and have been on a hot streak going 9-2 and two since switching to their new small ball lineup. The high-scoring duo was also on the latest cover of GQ in a feature story that focused on their fashion sense and their longtime mm -hmm. friendship. Joining us now, Mark Anthony Green, who wrote the piece. So good to have you back. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being here. And allow me to say before we start, my friend Mark Anthony Green is becoming the goat of superstar interviewers. <laughs> this I man has a rare talent for getting the biggest stars in sports and entertainment to sit down and open up. And I agree with all of that. It is, it is true. <laughs> more. This man has done GQ covers on LeBron. Odell, and now Harden and Westbrook, and he was great recently coming in and telling us about his Odell bombshell piece that was a big cover story. And now we are looking forward to hearing about behind the scenes with uh, James and Russ. The most stylish yep. duo in sports. Seriously, yep, and you are. can see that on display. Yeah. Uh, it's very clear how comfortable they were with you and just learning more about their relationship. Were you surprised by how close they were on and off the court? I wouldn't say that I was surprised. You know, I think that anytime you play with somebody mm -hmm. uh, as like a kid, you know, they, they right. really grew up yeah. together. Grew up together. Um, and they also are kind of notoriously two of the most authentic, real players in the NBA. Um, so, you know, what we try to do, we have like a, a crystal ball at GQ. We try to predict what is gonna matter, who's gonna be surging, um, and, you know, we had to put this cover offer in months before, mm. uh, you know, they actually were on the cover. Right. Um, and as you see now, this is kind of the perfect time because, you know, it seems like it's really working for them. Yeah. So. Is it, to your eyes and feel and instinct, is it legit between them? Is there a legit, deep childhood born connection between these two from Southern California? One, 100%. Okay. I, I don't know if they'll play every game for the rest of their careers together. Um, you know, there's like, in any relationship, you know, there's like dependency, like, like the, the two of you. To see <laughs> the two of you break up, nobody wants to see that. Right. You know what I mean? Well. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I think that they have a hell of a lot of love and respect for one another. And, um, you know, that, especially with the pressures that these guys go through, that just changes, changes that. Right. And, and, and the grueling season and, and you know, uh, playoffs are about to start here soon. And, and, and it know, could they're just supported. put pressures on this yeah. dynamic. But it, it could. We, yeah, it we, could. We, absolutely. We talked earlier in the show about one thing that caught my eye, which was Russ immediately just blurts out to you, uh, I, I, I tend to lose it during games. Yeah. He does. He got another tech last night, and he's getting in danger of getting suspended a game. Yeah. James talked about staying in his box. Yeah. I'm in my box, meaning I'm just closed off from the world around me on the court. Nothing bothers me. He just right. seems above it all. Right. Uh, almost um, aloof from what's happening around him. Did you sense that between the two of them, that they, they connect that way? Fire, ice, ice, fire? You know what? No, not in the interview, because, you know, everyone is... It's like neutral, you know what yeah. I mean? It's neutral ground and, and you're comfortable. And, you know, we at GQ really try to make sure that if you give us the time and open up to us, that we reciprocate that with an, an ideal situation and, mm -hmm. and fairness. And sure. Um, so, no, but what I do think we're seeing on the court is how sometimes you need Russell 
to put his head down and to drive to the hole like like you know yeah. like a speed. missile. You need that. <laughs> you, do. you need that for your for the morale of your team. You need it for the, for the crowd. You need that. And then sometimes you need James to take 17 dribbles, step back, and hit the three. And and I think that they're figuring out the pace and 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 who should do what when. And if they can like you know, dial that in perfectly, I think they'll be dangerous. They're going to be dangerous. Yeah. What You see what Russ is like on the floor, on the court. You see what he's like. You see what James is like on the court. What are they really like when you're just sitting down and you just, you know, you got water, you're just shooting yeah. around and you're just bouncing questions off them? The same. You know, I think that James Harden, if James Harden was a janitor, he'd be the coolest janitor you ever met. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's just how he carries right. himself. And both of them are from L.A. And, 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 you know, L.A. guys just have like a very smooth demeanor. Right. Um, and I think if Russell was a janitor, I think he'd be the most intense janitor. You'd have the cleanest floor <laughs> yeah. on the planet. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and so, again, it's one of those things, I think, you know, it's another thing that we look for in, in, in who we put on our covers. Right. We want to focus on the most authentic, real, interesting, you know, culture affecting people. And I think that's really who those two guys are. And you can see in the clothes, I mean, that's one of the most fearless photo shoots. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I yeah. mean, from like not even just athletes, like fearless, and there was nothing, they weren't afraid of anything. Mm. And fashion you is know? so important to them. I yeah. thought that was one of the most interesting parts of the piece how in the fashion world, they're not known as these stars. No one really cares about them in that sense. They have to make their own identity in the fashion world, and that was really unique to me. And we see it. I mean, you know, our, our editor-in-chief, Will Welsh, when we're in Paris, he's yeah. the editor-in-chief of GQ, yeah. he, at some he, of these dinners, the yeah, he's the big dog, oh, like, at, in some of these rooms. And, and I really commend them, and, and you got to take your hat off to Russell because Russell was really doing it before a lot of these guys, right. they're going into these rooms and it's it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, you're in Paris, people don't know who you are, they don't mm -hmm. know what sports you play. Mm -hmm. You know, the fashion world can sometimes be kind of right. snooty. Yeah. I'm sure that that <laughs> right. won't uh, be a surprise to anybody. And because of their true love for it, and, and James also really right. is very, very serious about it. Um, and I think that they both will, you know, during their careers and after their careers have uh, a real imprint and, and a, and a foothold in the fashion world, right. but they put themselves out there. And, um, you know, I I have so much respect for them and, and it felt like this cover was a way to really celebrate that. But isn't it like that with anything? When you see a rapper try to act, actors get, give you pushback. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Yeah, when yeah, you, see yeah. an actor, you see an actor trying to rap, you get pushback. So naturally so. But if also, if you look at it, Skip, you look at Anta Winter. Nobody cares the way she carries. Yeah, she, yeah. She, Anna Wintour is the she, 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 she nah, that's the she that's the now, now you talking, yeah. talking about the goat. No, that's the goat. Yeah. Yeah. That's the real She's goat. The so, but you have to. We wear know. her sneakers. Exactly right. So, in other words, you know, reading the article is like Russ. Like you have to go and you have to show up to a lot of these shows. And after they see you time and time again, they're like, "Oh, you serious? You just pop on the stage one time and talk about I want to do this." I mean, get out of my face. Yeah, yeah. So Russ was like, I had to do this over oh, and over and go in the room, reintroduce myself. Mm -hmm. I'm Russell Westbrook. I play NBA, yada, yada, yada. James says, I got to reintroduce myself. You're like, you don't know who I am? They're like, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I respect, I mean, again, what you're saying is absolutely right, but there are a lot of guys, you're, you're a multimillionaire. Right. You know, whenever you are in these other rooms, people cater to you. Yes. You don't have to be uncomfortable. Right. You don't have to, right. you know. And so I think they take it really seriously. And, you know, especially in this new era of GQ where we're really kind of doubling down on fashion and, right. and, and its importance, it felt like we needed to get them in the mix as right. soon as possible. So just in your eyes, cooler dresser, Russ, James. <laughs> cooler? Yeah. This is, I'll, I'm going to give you a real answer, but I want to I qualify real quick. So there's a difference between style and fashion. Right. Mm -hmm. Fashion is the is the art of getting dressed, right? Right. Style like Tom Brady's stylish, okay. right? But anybody could go to Tom Ford. Yeah, you're gonna leave looking stylish. Pick, pick right? that off the mannequin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna look you're gonna look good, right? right. Like and that. so I think that Russell, to me, more so than anybody in the NBA, he is the most fashionable. Okay. He like wakes up and it's like it's art when he's trying to do yeah. it. Right. 
You yeah. got to be willing to take risk. I was going to be fast. 100%. He's fearlessly fast. Yes. You got to take right. risk to be yeah. fashionable. But I will... So, so Russell's the answer, but when it comes to fearlessness... There's something about James Harden, what is he, 6'7"? Six, 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 no, six, no, 6'5". Six, 6'5", six, five. Six, five, six, six, yeah. Six, yeah. Six, he, okay, he's a, he's a tall 6'5". Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tall 6'5", short 6'7". Um, and some of the things he wears for a guy that size, I mean, again, fearless. Yeah. You know, he dresses the way he plays. He doesn't, you know, he does not care. You, and You ask him a good question. Do you ever wear something that's way out there and then you lose badly and you have to go to the post game wearing yeah. that? Do you ever think about that? Yeah. And they said, no. They, they, that was the fastest answer. It they were was. like, regret it? Yeah. Why would I regret I look right. great. Again, right. that's what love we, we love that. Yeah. You right. know, we absolutely love that. But I personally, you know, if I had a bad day, I'd be like, yeah, I wish I were. Yeah. I wish but I chilled it out. But that's what it's about, is that when you put on something, you can't think about it. If you're yeah. constantly doing this and yeah. doing all that, you you having second thoughts. You put on something and go. And it seems like to me, obviously, they put a lot of thought in what they're going to wear. Mm -hmm. But once they put it on, yeah. it doesn't even cross yeah. their mind. Like, Because some of the things I'm like, oh, no, nah, I can't do that, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bottom line, gut feeling from you after all the time you spent around them speaking and watching this shoot. Yeah. I want to remind everybody out there, over the last five years in the NBA, these are the two most ball-dominant players in tandem we've ever seen. They have gone back and forth leading this U league in usage rate. They have gone back and forth in winning scoring titles and MVPs. Yeah. And in the end, it's almost preposterous that they would join forces because it won't work. Right. It's, there's just one basketball. So gut feeling when the real games start and the pressure mounts and, and they have one of those Rockets games where the ball isn't falling from three for whatever reason, can they continue to coexist and sacrifice for the one thing neither has, which is a title, right? Russell Westbrook, James Harden, five years ago? No. Russell Westbrook, James Harden now, seasoned veterans, uh, guys that realize that they want championship, that they need, need. They championship. Need. They need. Uh, yes. Again, they've, they have matured in a lot of ways. And I think, time will tell, but I think that in that maturity, sometimes, somebody's going to have to give the ball up. They are. And I don't think that they would have been able to do that without, you know, growing and, and also having some really disappointing seasons and some, like, heartbreaking losses right. where some they felt like they're... Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think all of that has made them... It's kind of the perfect storm. And, again, we'll see. Only time will tell. But do I think it's possible? Yes. I agree. Because they both realize that their careers are ultimately going to be defined by championships. Yeah. I don't believe Kevin Durant would have joined the team early in the beginning. He would have gone to Golden State. Yeah. But because the criticism that was mounting, because yeah. he didn't have one. True. He did what he did. Yeah. So these guys know ultimately, yeah, I led the league three, three straight years, Skip, I averaged a triple-double. James Harden is putting up historic, historic offensive numbers. Right. But without a title, they're going to be, yeah, they were, they were great, but... But see, I, I feel like once it's kind of like, all right, if I have if I have to check these ten boxes mm -hmm. for me to be a Hall of Famer, I have the career I want to. Oh, they're gonna be Hall of Famers. Oh. They're, they're, they're Hall of Famers. Yeah. But I'm saying, if you check nine out of the ten, it doesn't matter how what order you check them in. If you wanted to average a triple double, which is crazy, and no right. one thought, you know, we were like, no, we'll never see somebody actually do that. And he did it multiple times. But they, and then, okay, you but know, so you've and done it. The top, the top be box says yeah. championship. But that's the only thing left. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm saying, yes. I don't, I don't knock them for what order they did it in, right. as long as they were doing right. it. Right. Oh yeah. There are some players where we won't say any names, but it's almost as if they take seasons off. You know, they didn't break any record. We weren't really talking about them. The team didn't really do anything. They lost in the first round. That you can't say that for these guys. Every year, they contribute something special, and so. Well, Russ hadn't been at the first round in a minute, though. Yep. He hasn't, but averaging a triple double is something that I don't. He, you know, he did it three, three in a row. That's yeah. he, <laughs> at that point you got to just you can't. I can't knock him for that. Yeah. No.
Hey, great piece. Man, thank Thanks. you guys. Well done. Yeah. Keep up the good work here. Appreciate it. The thank timing you. Right. of the piece perfect as well. That's Make what sure. we do. We have a crystal ball at GQ. <laughs> you knew. We won't share. Make sure to check out the piece on that GQ. Jean outfit off though, bro. That's, <laughs> this was inspired by y'all. Jean, jean, jean jacket, <laughs> denim, I mean denim I jacket, denim shirt, it. denim pants. Yeah. yeah. The hat? Maybe try it out tomorrow. Maybe the hat. I'm back and rock the hat. Ne Next time I come back, I'm back and rock the hat. For you. Any day I can talk about sports and fashion, that's a good thing. We did. So thank yeah. you for being here. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. No mercy. Well, Joe Burrow seems to be the consensus number one pick. Alabama QB Tua Tungavailoa is closing the gap between him and the Heisman winner. Uh, one anonymous NFC coach said that if Tua hadn't hurt his hip, his scouts would be split like they were in 2012 with Andrew Luck and RG3. The scout continued to praise Tua, saying, quote, I don't think it's crazy to say that he could be the next Russell Wilson. So, Shannon, how high would you take Tua? Skip, the only concerns that I would have is the medicals. And it seems like his medical coming back from the combine is clean. That's what I'm like reading. The, uh, the hip is fine. Yeah. Um, I've always said I thought Tool was better because I felt he's done it longer. Skip, you look at it, he stepped in as a true freshman, wins the national title game, coming in at the half of Jalen Hurts. The next year, he puts up unbelievable number. Yeah, he loses in the title game. In this past season, he was off to a better year, his junior year, than he was having his, his uh, sophomore season. 33-3. Yep. and three. That's what, that's what his numbers are. And I agree with the scout uh, that said that had he not gotten hurt, it would have been very, very interesting who Cincinnati would have taken. Mm -hmm. Skip, I would take him over Joe Burrow because I believe he's done it longer. I'm always leery. I believe Joe Burrow had the greatest season ever for a college quarterback ever in the history of the game in college football, Skip, but it was one season. And I'm always leery. Now, that you know, you know, Cam had the one great season, and it turned out great for Cam. Took a team to the Super Bowl, won the league's MVP. But more times than not, you get a more Achilles Smiths. You get more Jory Harringtons than you get Cam Newtons. By the way, Cam did have a national championship in junior yeah, college. Yeah, in junior right? college. But when guys, Skip, when guys just have this great season, because I, you remember, Skip, Joe Burrow, his, sophomore, his junior year mm -hmm. at LSU, it wasn't good. And then they get a new. They get and it new, wasn't awful, but it wasn't. Yeah, it was it eighteen to fifteen, yeah. something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, Skip, I love, I love Tua. The way the ball comes out of his hand. Does he have Patrick Mahomes' arm? No. His accuracy, his anticipation, and yeah. that's the, Skip. Those are the two most important things that people don't understand. They think, well, you need to be able to throw the ball hundred yards. How many times during the course of the game you gonna launch the ball 65, 70 yards, Skip? It's not very often, mm -hmm. but you need to be able to have great accuracy and tremendous anticipation mm -hmm. because in the NFL, you throw guys open. Mm -hmm. You don't wait until they get open. You wait until a guy get open in the NFL, it's a pick six going back the other way. Yeah, I agree. So I would take, Skip, for me, I like Tua better than Burrow. I would take him. If I'm the, if I'm the Dolphins, I feel real good where I am mm -hmm. because I kept bringing Ryan Fitzpatrick back. I can sit him and make sure that hip is 1,000% healthy. Skip, I, I, don't, I, believe, I, don't, I believe he's... You hate to say can't miss because you can miss, but I like I, I like I like Tua. I so love Tua. Why shouldn't the Bengals take him? They they they. I think the thing is for them the reason why they won't take him, Skip, is because they don't have a veteran guy that can redshirt him. Because if you look at the guys the last couple of years that redshirt him, Skip, they did pretty good. Yep. <laughs> they, 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 they did. Look at Lamar. Look at my homeboy. They did pretty good redshirting. Mm -hmm. So Lamar well, even, gave up his right, 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 the halfway, year, halfway through, through the season, yeah, yeah. but uh, but for me, Skip, I, I love Tua. I would I would take Tua over over Joe Burrow. If you're talking about deadly accurate, I give you Tua. If you're talking about lightning release, I, I'll give you Tua. But after that, I just can't buy the way I can buy Joe Burrow off last year, and I, I got it, it's one year, it's just simply the greatest year ever. <laughs> and I is. thought Baker Mayfield had the greatest year ever two years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I thought Kyler had the greatest year ever one year ago. Yeah, nothing and compared to this. Th this is, th this <laughs> is <laughs> preposterous. Th this is, in in those, those last three games he played, the SEC and then OU and the national championship, sure. You know, he completes 70% with 16 touchdowns to zero interceptions. He runs for two touchdowns, and his QBR for three games is 98. Well, you just can't do better. No. Right? It's, 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 it is. It's absurd. Yeah. And he just kept doing it all year, and we don't have time to go through all the 
just gaudy numbers that he put up. Did he have three really good receivers? Yes, he did. Did he have a Joe Brady who came from the Saints and changed his life with the new offense? You better believe he did. Did Tua have four receivers who could wind up going in the first round? They could. Yeah. Right? Devontae Smith went back, though. He, he so, but he'll back. be a first rounder no, next but year. I'm, I'm saying, yes. in Waddle, looks, yeah. looks like he, yeah. I don't know, first or second, right. maybe? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. So you could have three firsts and a second. Mm-hmm. It's outrageous track speed that he was throwing to. And then back to your medicals, it's so much to overcome. It because is hard to overlook his hip. The, the hip was serious. It was crazy. hip is the most serious, okay? but. But he had. Ankle surgery on both ankles, and it's that dangerous sort of tightrope surgery, mm-hmm. which is, is uh, it's risky. Right. And I guess it worked. I hope it worked yeah. for his sake. He broke the index finger on his throwing hand. It's not awful, but it's just another indication of brittle. Mm-hmm. It's just, and then, remember, it looked like the most serious injury was when he was trying to play through a knee injury. Mm-hmm. And I don't know the scope of it right. or the issue. Will it be ongoing? Right. Maybe. That's a lot of medical yeah. right there. And then... I look back at some of his biggest games, he was not great in it. And I question, does he have that backbone? Is he that guy? Under big game fire, is he made of the the toughest stuff? I'm not sure about that because in the 2018 SEC championship game against Georgia, again, was he struggling with it? I don't even know what it was, his knee or his ankle? I think it was his knee, but he was horrible. And finally, Nick did the reverse and he yanked him and put Jalen... Hurts back but, in, and he saved the day, right. right? And then against Clemson in the 2018 National Championship game, he put up fair numbers, but he threw two big interceptions, and they got blown out. Big six is one of yeah, his first, his I first throw. I, I got it. And that was the thing, Skip. When you look at it, you look at all the games he played, he's really played, had two bad games, the Jordan, the SEC Championship mm-hmm. game yeah. and the Clemson game. Other than that, because even though they lost to LSU, Skip, he was unbelievable. He threw for 418. And four touchdowns, but but he threw a lot of bad passes in the game because his QBR for college, because they're always way up, yeah. but it was 73. So Joe Burrow just flat out outplayed him in his house, right? It was at Tuscaloosa. Right. And then I start going down Joe Burrow, and remember, it started at Texas on a big Saturday night right. national TV game, yeah. and then here it went. Florida and at Alabama, and then it was – it's right. It got so it got to the point where he he wasn't ever missing a throw. Mm-hmm. He played three straight huge games, and not one time did I say, "Oh, he misfired on that throw." Right? right? Yeah. And listen, when th- they say you know comparing him to Russell Wilson too, because he's got great feet. Right. Listen, Joe Burrow at six four was an All State basketball player. He gets loose and yeah. runs for first downs. I ask, like it. Ask Clemson. Yeah. Ask Alabama. <laughs> right. Don't right. remember. Can he run? Yeah. Can he run? <laughs> yeah, he can run. And, and he's got some gumption about it. Yeah. Hmm. I first Off noticed him when he was at Texas, and, and they're just blowing him off their own field, and he's turning the stands, pointing at people. Well, okay, I like it. the other day with the yeah. hand size. Yeah. Like, I know, I, you like, know, I'm going to okay. announce my retirement. Like, like, he is not afraid to have an opinion and voice it and show like the confidence. No mercy. The NFL's proposed collective bargaining agreement was sent to the players for a vote, but some stars aren't happy that it has gotten that far. Before it was even sent to a vote, J.J. Watt tweeted hard no on that proposed CBA. And yesterday, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, and Richard Sherman all spoke out in opposition of the proposal. So, Shannon, what's going on here? Well, what's happening is, Skip, is that I think these stars are starting to, starting to see the groundswell of guys wanting to, to ratify this deal. Mm-hmm. But, Skip, what's at play here? is that when you look at the 32 owners, I think the 32 owners, let's just say the, the owner that's worth the least amount of money is probably Mark Davis. Uh, let's just say he's worth eight fifty to maybe a billion dollars. And then you go up to maybe Stan Kroenke or, or the owner of the uh, uh, Seattle, worth about $13, $14 billion. But we're talking about all billionaires. But in the NFL, you're talking about some guys that make 300000 versus guys that make $33 million. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, the guys that make thirty three that make uh, uh, thirty three millions, like, hold on, wait, wait a minute, guys, we need to slow this thing down because I believe we can get more. The guy that said we make three hundred thousand, like, uh, it's easy for you to say because you're going to be able to make your rent or your mortgage payment, and I need this money. You see, for me, Skip, I'm looking at it like this: What do owners hate to do? They hate to renegotiate contracts that hadn't ended yet. Yeah. Well, this CBA hadn't even ended yet, and they want to renegotiate it. 
So with the guys are like, hold on, wait, wait a minute. Why don't you have that same intensity when it comes to me renegotiating the contract? Now, they did take, Skip, you were talking about it the other day. We, you and I talked about it off the air. Is that they did renegotiate, says, okay, that's 17th game. We're going to take that. It's, a, it's capped at 250. Get what you can get. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get that. But I still believe there is more that they could get. Because here's the thing, Skip. If they're not going to redo the deal, say, take it or leave it, why can't I just take it later? Why well, I got to take it right now? But that's what's at play, Skip. Aaron Rodgers and, and Sherm and J.J. Watt is starting to see that a lot more of these players are, are gung-ho, and that vote was closer than they would have liked. 11 votes, they were hoping it was 10 to 1, 9 to 2. Or if all, you know, 32 uh, execs, they was hoping it's something like 25-7. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about 17 uh, to 14, 14 with and one, one of them, yeah. yeah. Like, wait a, whoa, wait a minute. Because mm -hmm. Aaron says, I've got a pulse. I'm talking about from my team. Sherm said, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. But I guess the other guys that voted, yeah, uh, my team said we want this deal. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got something at play here, Skip, but I just wish these guys would have stepped up earlier, two years ago. Where's D. Smith? D. Smith, Skip, remember he's talking all big? I told him to start saving that money, got his chest all out. We're going to get what we deserve. Mm -hmm. The worst mistake they made, he did a crappy deal in 2011. He about to do another one in 2020. Mm. He needs to go. Interesting you bring that up. I just found a Todd Archer tweet yeah. that just popped up a few minutes ago oh. from ESPN. D. Smith is confident the players will approve the agreed-upon CBA, but acknowledge some players are not pleased by saying democracy is messy. I'll take democracy over the alternative. Yeah, you know, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, he did not put a timetable on when the full player vote will happen, but we think it's coming pretty quickly yes. here. Shannon, this runaway train has left the station. Yes. Because it is soon going to a vote of all the players, including a whole bunch who make 300000 Yes. And they get just as much of a vote as the $33 million get. Yes, right? they do. Because it's only going to require a simple majority yep. of 51 to 49, whatever it is. 51, one more. Just, yep, yep. Yep. Right. Just one more vote. Yep. Right? Yep. Well, he's he is beating his chest the other way. He He's D. Smith, the executive director, is saying, I'm confident we're going to approve. Wow. Okay? He the, he the worst. He, right. the, he, the wor he the worst leader. He Tony, Tony Clark would have never allowed this to happen. Mm. Uh, 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 Roberts. Roberts for the NBA. Yeah. You would have never allowed this to happen. Gene Upshaw. Gene, I don't uh, think so. No. Actually, Skip, Gene and, and, and Commissioner Taglibu mm -hmm. uh, had a great working relationship. They did. And uh, the biggest thing was that Commissioner Taglibu would always do is like, yeah, you can get more, but why would you want more owners when you can keep the peace and everything is going well? Yeah. Well, when he retired, they got a guy in there that said, nah, we want this back. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? First chance they did, they locked the players out. Mm. Well, good luck because I heard no Late. talk about doing away with the hard salary cap. Nope. That's number one. And number two, they're going to give you one less preseason, but we're going to add a real game, real a 17th game. game. And when we get to the playoffs, we're going to take away one bye. Well, as a fan, I love taking away one bye because it makes it more precious to win the, right. your, your mm -hmm. conference, right? right? But that also means one team gets to play an extra game. Yeah, and the thing, but the thing you're skipping now, you subject yourself because now what the team that has that bye sit yeah. back and let you guys – Bump it up. There you Maybe go. you get Nick. Yep. And now I'm getting you less than 100%. Got it. No mercy. Following a disappointing second season, the Browns are reportedly taking a different approach with Baker Mayfield. After putting on weight last season to bulk up, the Browns' focus is now on Baker trimming down so he can be faster since he was noticeably slower while scrambling last season. So, Shannon, how big of a problem was Baker's weight? Yeah, it was a big problem. Baker needs to take a different approach because it's not <laughs> like the Browns are eating for him, Skip. Baker needs to keep that in mind. I uh, agree. And, and, and that's a part of it, Skip. I, I don't get athletes, Skip, that don't, put, don't value nutrition first and foremost. I got it. That's got to be it. How can you perform at an optimal level mm -hmm. when you got bull job in your system? Mm -hmm. I know it's cute when you were, Skip, when you were, like, in college and high school, you ate whatever you want. Yep. But, bro, you're professional now. You're not playing for room and books. But did he try to put on weight for protection? You know, for well, I got to protect. I, I, I he ain't no boxer. Ain't nobody punching him in the stomach. I, I got it. I, 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 
I, I couldn't, it was hard to watch him last year because he moved chubby to me. Yeah. He just looked chubby. Yeah. Looked when, again, I watched every snap he took at Oklahoma. There, there were, in his first year starting, he, he had 77 yards rushing at Oklahoma State when they were ranked 11th and 76 yards rushing at Baylor when they were 6th in the country. Yeah. Yeah. He could move, yeah. trust me. Different. He had good feet. In he, Cleveland, he rushed into the buffet that, line. That's what I'm saying. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't recognize the guy <laughs> who had dangerous feet at Oklahoma, yeah. seriously. And mostly he moved to throw, right. but, but he, he lost – Way too much mobility. I don't know what the idea was. I don't, I don't even. Yeah. I mean, all weight is not good weight. Guys are like, I want to bulk up. Yeah. But how did you do it? All right. Uh, I'm going to go eat healthy. That is it for us. No, we'll be back not. tomorrow no, morning not. at 9.30 no, Eastern. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.